Hello, Play the Game family. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. This episode is brought to you by Sunday Paintball. Sunday Paintball is one of the most amazing brands in the business right now. Their whole mission is to be the Tom Shoes of paintball and give players more Sundays. What does that mean exactly? They are donating 50% of all of their profits on any of their things right back into the game to the players, to you, to you guys that are listening right now. How exactly do they do this? Well, you could head over to their website, sundaypaintball.com. They have a tracker of how much money they have and will continue to give away. And uh, what they do is they they set up booths at events. They give out paint to teams. They give out, you know, uh, donations and gift certificates to different fields. They do a amazing job of giving back to the community that we all love. And it's really special. It's something that is very unique. We are incredibly appreciative and supportive of them because their passion is to help grow the sport. So if you guys could head over to sundaypaintball.com, check out any of their merchandise. They have so much cool stuff on their website. Um, you can use code play the game, get a 20% discount and do a great thing by uh, knowing that some of that money is going back to getting more players out to play on Sundays. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode is brought to you by the one and only G2 Paintball. If you are in Arizona or on the West Coast and soon to be nationally, be on the lookout for G2 training dates and be sure to sign up. They are a paintball athletics company designed to help you become the best paintball athlete imaginable by running you through all of the different moves and techniques that you need to know and you're going to be implementing on the paintball field. So that way when you get into the situations, the muscle memory is dialed in. You are also going to learn skills. You're going to learn tactics and of course the agility which is training to maximize your performance on and off the field this stuff is used by myself and Marcelo and we're pushing paintball players to become pro or just dominate in your division don't make excuses out there physical fitness is at an all-time high in paintball and you cannot win paintball tournaments unless you are ready to go physically on Sunday when you're dead tired and you're ready to hold up that trophy with your friends and family so you got to be prepared and G2 will help you do that head on over to g2paintball.com also check out their Instagram at g2paintball and give our man Victor Gamboa at Gamboa Limited, that's his Instagram, a follow and support him as well. It's owned and operated by Victor and Rusty and they're doing tremendous things in the sport. We absolutely love G2 and we cannot wait for you to get involved. So have some fun with G2 Paintball. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by Transfuse, the amazing premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula that is scientifically designed to replenish you at the cellular level and they use all natural ingredients in their products. It is packed full of zinc, vitamin B6, vitamin C, sodium, potassium, and choline. And when you take this product, you are gonna feel the difference on and off the field. I know that playing paintball with Transfuse has been a game changer, and it will be for you as well. If you head over to translabs.com, that's T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com, and use code PLAYTHEGAME, you will get 10% off. And if you subscribe to a monthly delivery service, you get an additional 10% off. So you can take advantage of a total of 20% off on these amazing products. Also, head over to their Instagram, at transfuse.official, and check them out. And be on the lookout for their new flavors and brain booster nootropics that are coming soon. We absolutely love Transfuse from top to bottom, one of the best companies in the world. 
with the greatest people running it. So head on over and become a part of their community and check them out. What's going on, PTG fam? Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. This episode, we have none other than Tom Guest. Tom Guest came into the World Cup hitting, shooting fireballs out of his paintball gun, playing for San Antonio X-Factor. Turns out he's back for the full season. He's going to be with them full time. And Tom has an amazing story. He's just an absolute baller and a great dude straight out of Canada. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. First show of the new year. It's 2022. We have so much fire coming at you guys, and we have none other than Tom Guest. We figured one of the hottest dudes in the business right now coming back to San Antonio X Factor after a stellar performance at World Cup uh, and deciding to come back to the pro scene in full force. My man, what's good? Yes, sir. Ooh, a lot, a lot. Thank you, guys. Appreciate um, you guys having me on today. It's fun. Uh, we we're talking prior. That's it's kind of a weird situation. You might hear some party in the background. I took a last minute trip out to a ski resort and uh, all the boys are in the other room, but I want to get on. So yeah, but yeah, things are good. I'm super excited for the season and yeah. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, dude. Thank you for being here and happy new year to you. 2022. It's going to be yeah. a great season of paintball, man. Um, obviously X factor is still looking strong. I know they lost Archie, but you guys have been working hard, obviously continuously. And um, with the, firepower that you guys still have there's no doubt or reason as to why you guys aren't going to continue to be great on the field out there together so what is your consensus on everything that's happened um with you know the shifts that have been made and everything that's going on moving into 2022 yeah for sure um i guess my like my perspective on like archie's move and changes like that are probably a little different um mm -hmm. than the other people like I, i'm very new to the team these guys have been a very close knit unit for for years you know it's been a very consistent similar roster um so i don't really have that like i don't have that bond with a lot of the guys mm -hmm. um so him leaving like archie's a great player um it's definitely like a loss for the team but um just being an outsider and like kind of coming in and seeing everyone's abilities and and what each player brings to the table with like a very unbiased um like fresh look i think we still have a really good roster um i'm not too worried i mean yeah, like Mar or Marcelo and Dynasty, you guys gained a great player, but um, in terms of like the the five that we can field, I'm still super confident. Like we got some nasty players on the team, and I, I believe it just got released the other day. We got uh, LJ Parrish. I used mm -hmm. to play with him like years ago on Distortion, and he's definitely grown a ton as, as a player over the past couple of years. So I'm super excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I mean, you guys have a stellar roster. The X Factor has been so deep. Uh, so many weapons. Um, and then to have you come in, I got to be honest, you know, when you came back for World Cup, I was like, man, Tom hasn't played in a while. How's he going to do? And you balled out. You played so well for them and, and were that closer in a lot of those situations. Um, so, yeah, I think X Factor is in a great position, man. You guys have a great coach. Ryan Brand is, is one of the best in the business. I have a lot of admiration for Ryan Brand. You have a ton of weapons. Um, I think it's going to give players like Jesse Stevens too a little more of opportunity to go shine. Jesse's a fucking ball. Yeah, dude, he wants it on, to. Yeah, we need him on the show. That dude has yeah. so much grit and so much damn hunger. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Jesse Stevens. He's a savage out there. Um, so yeah, you got. I mean, look, you can't sure. replace you can't replace an Archie, right? But uh, yeah. but you guys might not need to. Is the thing you know you might not need to. It's like uh, you guys have have a lot of great pieces still. So. Um, yeah. And you know how it is. I mean, shit, like Tyler left us and it gave us a little more fire, <laughs> right? Like it's sometimes it, it's a little bit of inspiration to a team as well. Um, so you guys are in a, in a really good position, man. I, I like that you uh, decided to dive back in full force. How's traveling through, you know, through the borders? Yeah. Are you able to make that every time or what? Yeah. So this season should be good. Um, after I think it was like the 2019 season with um, Aftermath when I played pro with them, that's kind of when when COVID and all that uh, came to be. And that was a difficult year. So I didn't play much at all. I played the first event in semi-pro with Brawl, which was like a, a last week, like last minute decision. Um, and then I played World Cup and it was a hassle for sure. Like I wasn't able to do everything. 
Now I think it'll be a little bit better. We still have like a five day quarantine rule when you travel internationally, but in terms of like getting through the border and like airports and travel, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. I have to, I have to do a little bit more research, but um, just with what I'm doing with work and whatnot now, it's a lot easier for me. Like I can handle the quarantine times. I'm not doing shifts and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. that's helpful, but it is still, um, it's still hassle. Like this, this world cup, I had to pay 300 bucks for a, I think it was about that maybe 150 us uh to get a test going back home and then i had to do a test three days before i came to the states so yeah i ended up staying for like two weeks just so i didn't have to do all these tests like back to back to back that's not yeah, so bad you where, where'd you go did you fly fly back down to texas eat some barbecue hang out after oh, yeah. With the boys? <laughs> yeah yeah so like i came down for the two weekends prior um rather than fly back i just hung out with meter at his place for like the the four days between because we did two three days and uh yeah it was a good time we got to fly into florida earlier it was it was a little bit of a vacation for me for sure dude that's awesome i i do yeah. want to pick your brain on you know lj coming onto the team and your thoughts on that also as you said you've you have some experience playing alongside him and uh, maybe walk us through those times when you guys played together and uh and how you see this all going with you two being back on the field together yeah i'm really excited so what what happened with lj way back um i played on distortion and distortion was predominantly uh, a chicago-based um divisional team yeah a lot of those yeah a lot of those guys um, kind of stepped away from the sport and we were the canadian guys we were playing as rhythm at the time i believe like syracuse rhythm our team folded some of us kind of joined up with distortion when they stepped away, we took over the reins and um, it mm-hmm. became, it, it was a Canadian team with, um, with Mike Kerr and David Barga and uh, LJ was on the team at the beginning. I don't remember exactly why he left. I believe it was just something to do with travel. Most of our practices were going to be in Canada and he was, he just wasn't able to do that. Um, so whatever reason we parted ways, but like playing tournaments with him, like he is super um, passionate. I think that's a, a good word for LJ. Oh, yeah. Like, He's, he's a, a fierce competitor. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, it's nice when you look over at a teammate and you just kind of like see it in their eyes. You're like, okay, like this guy, <laughs> this guy's down to get it done. Right. And he's got that fire in his eyes all the time. And um, I don't know yeah. at the time when we played together, I don't think any of us were very good. We're just in the divisional ranks, kind of figuring like finding our own. Uh, but it's been, that would have been like 2013, 2014. He's been playing pro for a long time. And I feel like he's developed um, immensely in that time. And he's definitely a weapon. So I'm, I'm super, super excited to have him on the field. He yeah. can play everywhere too, which is great. Like very versatile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. Beast. LJ's LJ's a massive weapon. We had him on the show and I just like, I'm such a fan of his personality. He's a good dude. He's just a good dude. He's hungry. He he's is. motivated. He's like the type of player that you want to have as your teammate. Tyler talks about it all the time. You know, it's about being a good teammate. He uh, definitely seems like he's, he's a good teammate. Um, and he has a lot of potential, I think in the right system too. I mean, I think he's going to do really well with you guys because I think Ryan brand and, and the experience on that team is going to open his, his paintball mind up tremendously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred the, percent. The really cool thing about Ryan is that like, um, I don't know, he has a really, I don't even know how to describe it. A great coaching style. Um, it was just really easy for me to kind of come in and fit in with the team. I didn't feel a ton of pressure. Um, it was quite relaxed for how competitive like X factor is as a team. You just kind of like go out there do your thing. Um, he sees what he sees. He makes adjustments. He's, he's a great coach. I had a really good time. And I think that he um, kind of lets people figure it out for themselves for the most part, you know, it's hard coming into it like a new camp and he lets you kind of find your comfort zone and things like that. And, and then goes from there. So mm-hmm. LJ will have a good time. I personally think that's exactly what makes a great coach. Uh, that's that's kind of what Skinny has done. And you have to have such a high paintball IQ to be able to understand what players are good at. I see so yeah. many times, especially especially once you get down into the divisionals, is players or, or coaches, my bad, coaches, they have a, a vision of how they want the field to be played. And so they just tell any player, hey, you're going to be this guy and this is what you're supposed to do. But that's not that player's specialty or what they are comfortable with or good at. Now, don't get me wrong. You should be versatile. You should understand the entirety of the game. You should be able to play all the roles. But a really good coach will let a player go and be special on their own and say, okay, how can I implement that into 
my game plans, not how, how can I, you know, make my game plans and then put it on the team. It's, I'm going to take my players that I have and understand their strengths. And that's how I'm going to formulate my game plans. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Ryan's really good at that. Uh, I think Todd's good at that. Skinny's Mm -hmm. been fantastic at that so far. Right. Like that's, that's really what makes a good coach in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to know your players, man. You gotta, you gotta understand the rhythm of what type of music we're going to play out there. It's like, I always say a rod, he's playing like smooth jazz out there, just the way he's, you know, he's flowing and and going up the middle of the field and everybody has a different cadence and you have to understand those cadences and how they're going to work together. Once you get the entire organization fielded, you have your five players out there and how that's all going to, you know, transpire on the field. It's a really important balance for sure. I think bringing up A-Rod's a great example of that. So I don't think he's he's not utilized well on impact. Like they're trying not to fit all. him into into their system. Um, yeah. And that's 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 not how he plays. You know, it's like, not A-Rod. Tell you, him to you, shoot you... one. Tell him to shoot something <laughs> off the break, but then let him do his thing. Right. He's not <laughs> yeah, gonna exactly. He's not committed to doing that one specific job. And yeah. I don't look at that as a negative. It's just that's not that's not what he does. You got to kind of let him loose. It, and, it, it's a you know. negative. It's a negative if the player hurts you, but yeah. A-Rod and, and honestly, early in A-Rod's career for many times, he would hurt you more than he would help you, but he has gotten yeah. to a point, especially you, you, you saw it in Vegas in 2020 when the Ironman won and he was the MVP. He uh, played very special, you know, and, and he was, yeah, able, you're not- to, he was mm-hmm. able to just, you know, let it rip out there. And uh, yeah, the coach isn't putting him in a position yeah, that right. is outside of like what his talents are. Right. He had the freedom to explore and do what he wanted. He was starting to really piece it together. Yeah, absolutely. Even as an artist, you watch him on his Instagram stories or, you know, he's just complete flow state kind of guy. And you don't want to box in an individual like that because you're not going to get the best out of him, you know? Um, And and there's certain individuals you got to box them in and that's how you get the best out of them. You got to give them a really tight, confined um, you know, system of ways of moving about the field. But um, with A-Rod, you know, we've all been able to play alongside him and, and watch how he works. He's just, he's out there playing music, you know, freestyle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what's great about Ryan. I've, I've had the, the opportunity to, to be coached by multiple different people. And he's very much, um, he's, he's open to input. I think that's super important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like, he'll take that, little bit of information that you give him and he'll work that into it and yeah, yeah it it just makes you it makes you feel comfortable out there i don't know that's a 100 percent. it's how i feel <laughs> yeah and, dude that's so important you have to have a great line of communication with your coach and with all the players yeah. around you too i we have to be passing good information around asking good questions because that's the only way we're going to get good answers. If I'm not asking good questions, I'm not going to get good answers. And that comes from having a really good stream of communication from top to bottom, from the coach all the way down through the organization to every player. Um, And if you don't have that, you got to start building that type of an chemistry and an atmosphere within the organization, because that's the only Mm -hmm. way you're going to get that top level connectivity out there. Definitely. Yeah. Who's your, who's your road dog on X factor? Like who's the dude that, you know, is it rainy rain dance? Honestly, I gotta say meter, man. Um, meter. Yeah. Like uh, X factor. I mean, maybe it would have, it, it was, it's very unlikely that I would be on X factor right now, if not for, for meter. And it's yeah. fun, like, we don't, we're not, we hadn't been super close. Um, this was like three years ago. I had a practice out. Uh, we're, on i was on sda at the time and we we're flying out to play x factor and i had a layover and uh i just posted that i was stuck at the airport for like eight hours you know like instagram post and i knew who meter was but we have never spoken like never hung out and he's like hey man like i'm in i'm in dallas i'll come pick you up and i was like all right this is like nine o'clock on thursday afternoon whatever it is like in in the middle of the day in the morning so he drives out and we hung out for the day. It was really cool. He drove him back to the airport and, and that was that, right? That was like three years ago. And then this year um, before, I think it was, was Chicago the event before the cup? Before cup? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he reached out and was like, hey, do you think you'd play Chicago? Like we might need bodies. And it was really last minute. I couldn't make it happen. Um, and then they went and they got second uh, to you guys, Marcelo. And then he reached out again after that and was like, Hey, what about cup? And I was kind of surprised, like, especially considering they just got second. I'm like, they're not going to want me to play cup. 
but yeah, he, uh, he had a big part in, in talking to Ryan and those guys and had some pull and, and helped get me on the squad. And, um, we get along really well. We're just, we just vibe well. So definitely, Peter. definitely made her. Peter's yeah. dynamite, dude. He's such a cool dude. Uh, again, we had him on the show. He was in the PTP community for a little bit. He's mm-hmm. a rock star, man. And, and, uh, the way he's played this year is right. Yeah, well, it's the best he's ever played period. Yeah. Um, and it's it. He's done a lot of amazing things for X factor. It's cool to see. He actually just announced on go sports. He's one of the, uh, icon of the year, uh, nominees, which is super That's cool. Awesome. Um, much yeah. deserved. Yeah. I mean, the, the kid has just been dominating. So yeah, happy to see, man. Definitely happy to see. And just a great dude, like you said, all the way around. And what he does for paintball as well. I mean, he put on mm-hmm. his own tournament this year. Um, and he's just yeah. he really cares about Huge. the community and growing this sport, which is which is everything, you know. We have uh a lot of people that love paintball and we gotta make sure it continues to thrive. And he's one of the people that's helping us with that. Yeah, he, he's working, he's working on it, he's asking the questions, he's got his brand, he's got, like Astra, the tournaments, all that. Yeah. Um, that's it's it's a step in the right direction for sure. And like yeah. I say, I say meters, my boy, but all the guys in X factor are super yeah. cool. Like it's weird coming into a new camp, you know, like they've known each other forever. And like, I've been on teams where people come in and sometimes uh, I don't know, it's just weird for the first little bit, but all those guys were super cool. They made me feel right at home. And yeah, um, yeah I love all those dudes they are great. That's such a great camp. Uh, I love going out there to train with them. Heat plays out at X factor quite a bit and yeah. just the coolest dudes, best hospitality, they cook it up in a mean yeah. way, you know, so they're just great people. Yeah, I've, <clears throat> absolutely. It's always fun practicing out at X Factor. One of yeah. the best facilities. The food is bomb. Like oh, you said, yeah. the barbecue in Texas, that's the next level. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we get to go out there this year and practice you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, so Tom, for a lot of, uh, a lot of listeners, they honestly might not know who you are. You kind of, again, you know, you disappeared from the scene a little bit. Canadian baller came up. Uh, I think, you know, in my opinion, made your name with Aftermath when you guys earned the the pro spot and then came in that first event with a, you know, hot third place. Um, let's kind of talk a little bit about your time with Aftermath and and what kind of transpired that year to where I don't think you finished the season with them, right? I think there was a couple of you that didn't finish the season with them and and then weren't around the NXL for a little bit. So, like, what transpired to kind of, you know, cause you to take that little hiatus and then come back just in full force? Yeah. Yeah, I've kind of been a bit of um, a ringer. I've just been joking about only playing World Cups as of late. <laughs> That's tight. You know? I like that. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and keep it a, as short as possible. Um, but oh, you don't have to here. We, we, yeah, that's we're true. Long. We, got, we got time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I played with Distortion, and that kind of led into um, Aftermath. Like that team fell apart. Um, I believe that we could have potentially had a pro spot with that. It was offered, but the team was falling apart and there was some miscommunication. So we missed out um, Mm. on a pro spot or possibly having one. I don't even know if we could afford it, but that's when um, the whole aftermath thing came to be, which was awesome. If you don't mind me asking what, what happened, because there might be some kernel of knowledge, valuable insight as to how teams can avoid distortion. Yeah. Falling apart and stuff like that. It, a lot of it was, was backing, um, mm-hmm. like a big, a big struggle for me. Uh, it's just being Canadian and trying to make it in, in paintball. It's kind of always been, it's mm-hmm. been a barrier. Like a lot of us distortion was, um, predominantly like a Southern Ontario based team. Um, mm-hmm. we had like Barga from Chicago and he'd fly out, but all of us lived around Toronto and there is nobody to practice. Like we would have to drive 10 hours each way to play Revo or in Baltimore or, Damn. um, or to Chicago, right? Like yeah. to do that, like two weekends in a row and then fly out. It's just like, it's a lot on your body being crammed in cars mm-hmm. and we were paying for everything. Like at the time we were sponsored by planet eclipse and they helped us with gears and stuff like that. But like the entry fee and paint, like that was all out of pocket. So mm-hmm. that was, that yeah. was really big. Um, and you're saying like, how can teams avoid that now? It's like the ability to market yourselves with social media, with like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, like, yeah. I think it's slept on. Um, if you work hard enough at it, like there's definitely is like, there, there are financial gains to be made. If you can show value to, to, to companies and say like, this is our following. Like, yeah. this is kind of what we need. Like, this is what we can offer you. Uh, we didn't utilize that, but that's mm-hmm. kind of like, it's something to think about if you're a divisional team or an up, up and coming team Absolutely. and you're like, 
we're struggling right now, right? Yeah. Because no one can just keep forking out all this money to play. It's it's very expensive. And that team. Um, so that's kind of why that fell apart. Um, yeah. Well, that team was pretty iconic. Like I remember, you know, always hearing about that team and, uh, we're always like, just right there. We're close. <laughs> yeah, I know. Which, yeah. which is amazing. And it, it birthed you and it, you know, it has helped a lot of paintball players, which is, you know, sometimes things don't go the way that we plan them. But, um, if your heart is pure and you love the game, you know, things will manifest out of it and you'll continue to to thrive in this game it's just you know obviously it takes yeah. sometimes a lot of work and and that's a whole another battle too yeah. yeah yeah so that's that was that so yeah for sure <laughs> i guess that that kind of led into the next year uh, a lot of us weren't sure what we we're going to do um mm -hmm. some people quit some of the guys i'm hanging out with right now are on distortion and they don't play anymore um but anyway yeah. that next season um there was the whole aftermath thing that who do we about. got who do we got in the in the building here? Who you got in the in the? Uh, uh, we the got we got Scott Graham, all right. Um, who is now coming back out of retirement? He was playing with the Bears in semi pro, and now he's go. he's on that roster for the Bears Thunder uh, collab. Nice. Uh, Mitch Finley, he was nasty at the W. He was on Distortion. We had no. Alistair McDonald. He was with Image, mm -hmm. and and then we had Mitch's brother. So it's a it's a whole paintball squad here. Shout out. You guys are going to do yeah. some snowboarding. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three three days of it coming out. There we go. But, um, Love that. Yeah. So um, Aftermath was, I, I believe him and reached out to to Barra and kind of got the ball ball rolling there. We weren't sure what we were going to do. Um, and that kind of brought us all together. And we had that first, like, really successful semi-pro year. Um, the following year that you were asking about, uh, when we won our pro spot, uh, was really, it was just tough for me. Um, with work. So for about six years, I was working as a special constable, which is, it's like midway between security and policing. You have policing mm -hmm. powers, but you don't have a firearm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that, that meant that I had to work like this weird rotating schedule of three day shifts, three off, three night shifts. And it was just like brutal. Yeah. And um, I had a boss for a while. I don't work there anymore. He just like, he sucked. He would never work with me to get time off. And it was tough. It was a tough, uh, a tough period of my life for sure because mm -hmm. it was something that i thought that i wanted to pursue i'm just like i'm gonna get into policing this is for me and um that led to me missing like a, a bunch of practices that first pro year uh that that really sucked like yeah to fight for so long and to play for so long only to like finally like we we got the pro spot you know like we're here and um i'm missing practices like i just can't get it off like that sucked um mm -hmm. And I believe I got to play, I did play every event that year with the exception of cup. Um, my vacation was canceled. They signed me up for some course, didn't tell me. Oh. And uh, it just would have been really bad had if I like canceled on that. So I didn't go to cup and it sucked. And yeah. that kind of just like took the wind out of my sails. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, well, what in, that, in that season, you guys started off hot. Like. Yeah. That first tournament, you guys, you guys were, you, you made it known, you know, Aftermath is going to be playing some top level ball. And, uh, and then, you know, the remainder of the season, it kind of just fizzled a little bit. Um, what, what led to that? Do you think? It, it, it was a weird, it was a weird vibe on the team that year. Yeah. Um, I think like myself included, like I'm definitely guilty of it. People just weren't, they weren't in it. Um, I think people had a lot of stuff going on outside of paintball and you could just like tell like when we we're at events, people weren't all together. Mm -hmm. People just weren't in it for whatever reason, you know, like you had one, like kids worrying about school, people with, uh, with new girlfriends, you know, like people not being happy with the dynamic of the team or the coach or, or whatever it is. Um, yeah. and it was just rough. It was rough. <laughs> it, yeah. Like we wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't have meetings and like, we wouldn't go over, like we'd lose two games and then people would split up. We wouldn't have a dinner. We wouldn't have a meeting. And I'd just be like, what are we doing? Like, what is <laughs> happening? Like, Oh, we're just going to go into tomorrow and play again. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah it was brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, oh. I can't put my finger on it. It's just external well, factors. No, you're right. Those little intricacies are everything, you know, having all those details nailed out before you step onto that field. Um, and like we were talking about yeah. earlier, the convos, that's everything, you know? Yeah, man. It was, uh, it was weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. What was it, it was a like? Weird season. 
What was it like playing for Mike Hinman and uh, playing for the aftermath name, the brand? You know, obviously, legendary brand known for the hard work and how much how much they put into the game. What was that like? It was sick, man. Like Mike, um, he's he's an OBS kind of guy. You know, absolutely. He's, he's not afraid to call you out and and tell you when you suck. <laughs> you know, like you have to bring mm -hmm. your A game to that. And like rightfully so, he he pays a lot of money, puts a lot of time in when like what he did for us um, to run that team and to make it happen for us. So he, he only expects the best from you. Um, it was a really good experience, you know. Like I was able, I'm from Canada, man. Like I live in the middle of nowhere, and like I'm flying out to California, like every couple of weeks, hanging out there. Like I'm on the other side of the world. I don't know, Jira, I, I don't know if that's accurate, you know, but it feels so far from home yeah. and to be doing that and like competing against dudes whose posters I had my wall, like when I was younger, it was just a really cool experience. And I'm super fortunate that he made that happen for me and the rest of us. So yeah. like nothing but, but good things to say about Mike and that experience there. Um, He's a legend. Yeah. He just, he just gave us the resources we needed to, to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. like when we played for him, like, We'd be playing you guys and, and Iron Man, Heat, Dynasty, like all the best teams when we we're in divisional. And I wish mm -hmm. he had stuck around for, for pro. I'm not like, I don't really know what's going on in his personal life, but he just, he couldn't do it for whatever reason. Um, and that for sure, like played a role in how we performed. <laughs> I, think I think we got so away sure, with yeah. being, got away with being, with shit that we wouldn't have got away with if Mike was a coach at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he, you said it best no bs and he shoots it straight always um and yeah. he as a player was also one of the best players that's played this game the guy understands all these things that we're talking about the intricacies the yeah. devotion the passion so when he's you know getting you ready to play you know you're about to play some good paintball because you don't want to let him down on that aspect as well oh yeah yeah, yeah. If that doesn't get a, a fire lit on your ass like <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure He's just such an animal. Uh, we, we love Mike. We're going to have to have him on again soon as well. Um, talk about all the new developments that have been going on with Aftermath. Yeah. But uh, that is not why we're here today. It is <laughs> um, guest time. And I do want to pick your brain kind of on the Canadian paintball scene um, and yeah. how, how you think that is has been growing up north there. Do you think that you guys are seeing production at the local fields and all that kind of stuff, uh, a little bit of growth with paintball up there? Definitely. Like for people getting into the sport and um, people at not at like the peak of divisional play, it's definitely really good. There was a period of time where um, you guys both played CSBL, right? Yes. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I got yeah. oh, my rings in my room. It's like one of my oh, most stop. prized possessions, stop. bro. Oh, I got a CSBL <laughs> yeah. ring. Dude. That's like, those are dope. Dude. They're hard to get. They're hard to they're get. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're big. Hell yeah. The yeah you got a couple, are, right? That was it, man. I, I've got one. I think yeah, I got okay. one from like the last yeah. year that they did the the pro division or the elite mm -hmm. division. That's tight. I, yeah. Yeah, I only you, played you guys were always swooping in and getting them. <laughs> <laughs> the superstar lineups, man, all the time. It was wild. Yeah, I only, took played, down... I only played one event with Kitchener Recon um, up there with yeah. Thomas Taylor one time. Yeah. So where you played yeah. that event was like, was my hometown, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that's, that's where I grew up. <laughs> awesome. Dude, right. So that was like the local field I'd be ripping at on like Wednesday nights where you go out there, but that's, yeah. it's gone now. Oh, but yeah, man. so that was like the big thing, like for the longest time. And I believe the CXBL died like maybe 2016. I could be off by a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And there was a lapse where there like wasn't any, there was nothing going on in terms of tournament paintball. It was, it was pretty brutal. And one of the local guys, um, Derek Welts, he owns Colder Distribution. He started um, the OPL, which is, like nice. the main, the main league right now in my area. And he's doing an amazing job running that. Like I used to, to play with him. I believe he was on recon or part of that camp. I'm not a hundred percent, but um, yeah, it's cool that to see what he's done. Um, he owns a paint distribution company. The leagues ran really well. I think the, they have an open division, which is kind of like, it's comparable to like D2. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's similar. It's similar to the, to the NXL, like the format, everything like that. Um, the professionalism of it all so that's really good but love that for me what's what's kind of always sucked there's never been like like my group of friends we were kind of like always the best and there's no one who we could practice with where it would feel like a challenge we'd have to drive so mm. far <laughs> mm. the, 
like the the peak level of paintball in Canada is, is gone. Like CXBL and a lot of those teams and players, like they're gone. It's a whole mm-hmm. new breed that's coming up. But I'm seeing good things for sure. Yeah, I was actually just talking with uh, Nelson, who yeah. runs uh, Kitchener Recon, and yep. we're talking about you know making another trip up there. So I can't wait to see all the Canadian paintball players. Um, hopefully be it's up all there. new man Every, it's a lot of young kids it's it's cool like yeah. none of the old dudes play anymore i'm i'm somehow the old dude now <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> that's crazy um yeah but yeah major love to canadian paintball and everything that they're doing up there you know it's it hasn't been easy um and especially with you know everything that went on with the pandemic and uh you know also just you know like you said the league closing down it's it's uh definitely something that you have to keep working for but as long as everybody keeps playing and having fun, it'll keep thriving. For sure. There, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's tough for, I have people like fans DMing me, um, being like, Hey, like I've seen the vlogs or I'm watching the webcast, or I heard that like you're from around here and they're, they're like, what kind of advice would you give me? And it's so hard because it's like, I don't know. I've just been <laughs> doing it for so long. Like people know who I am now, but in order to make a, a name for yourself as a Canadian now in paintball is so difficult. Like mm-hmm. it's your, you ha- it's international travel. Like you mm-hmm. have to have pony up and fly out and practice with whatever team you want to get on and, and hope that, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be really yeah. good. You gotta Absolutely. hope that somebody recognizes you and then you have to make sacrifices because it's like, you're going to either move to the States or you're going to be traveling all the time. So yeah. there's a lot of trade-offs there. <laughs> Absolutely. How do- yeah, I mean, you look at like Ben Challenger. He moved to the states, has been able to accomplish the uh, the paintball mm-hmm. dream, you could say. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's not easy, dude. It's not easy because it's a lot of risk. It's a lot of um, uncertainty. And even if you do make it, it's like okay, you still probably need to find a good career. <laughs> you know, like yeah. even if you do make it, you need a way to to pay the bills. You know, there's only a, a small percentage of the pros that are making it enough to have paintball be their only thing. Exactly. Yeah, Ben's definitely like an an outlier there. It's it's hard. He's it's the man. A challenge, man. I love Ben. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I love Ben too. Ben's so awesome. He's the he's meme the lord. Yeah, he's he the is. damn meme lord. He is. Yeah, he's he does, so he funny. Does share a good collection, dude. I I message him cons- all the time, like just dying laughing at some of the stuff he posts. <laughs> like, dude, that is so funny. I'm so thankful that you shared that. Like, it's it's fucking comedy i love it yeah it's just like curated content i know exactly yeah, what you're talking yeah. about him and, and colt colt roberts he, mm-hmm. every day he's posting yeah it's not as much as ben but they're, they're quality you gotta, you yeah. gotta check him out <laughs> we just had colt uh, on he's a legend too man dude he's love hilarious him. colt is fucking yeah. so funny bro <laughs> holy shit i think he hammered down fucking seven uh rum and cokes <laughs> during the show oh bef- yeah see i didn't know yeah. if this was like a, if, if i could be having a beer right now is that oh, all dude, of we're, yeah we're good half the time we're drinking some wine some beers yeah there cheers brother cheers i have one right beside him uh, like i don't know if i can uh, dabble dude, we, a little listen yeah. the cool thing about this show is we want to connect the the fans our friends with the players man because we're just like yeah. them we do the same shit they do when it's time to clock yeah. in we clock in and we work our asses off right but hey off season time, a little bit. We're gonna have we're gonna have a beer. We're yep. gonna have some wine if we're out. Ski yeah. hills like right yeah, here, dude. You're out at the ski <laughs> resort right now, dude. You're about to go shred the slopes. Like, oh, come yeah. on now. You see, dude. This is kind. Of, this is a little crossing the line, in my opinion. That photo of LeBron walking into the stadium with a glass of wine <laughs> before the fucking yeah. game. Like, bro, come on. And then he did it with a cigar, like a. a a little bit later like, come on lebron that's that's too much yeah. after the game yeah, maybe right, before yeah. the game you're walking in with a glass of wine <laughs> yeah we like, get it we, we get it we man. get it we get it bro <laughs> we get it exactly we get it's, it i you, i've never seen it before i've never seen wine like such a fashion statement it was strictly yeah. a fashion thing 100 it percent. Yeah. <laughs> well it's like because he he he's been overly vocal about how much he loves wine now he's like a wine connoisseur i guess yeah. you know he has sommelier <laughs> he's so fancy uh and so you know he walked into the stadium but that's why he'll never be kobe um love me some kobe lebron is is third on the list in my opinion but uh Ooh. yeah <laughs> hot take good to know good to know we're good i wasn't sure if this was pg-13 like i don't know what the <laughs> ratings are on here no we're yeah. good man yeah we're good like, it again, is it is a family show you know it's a family show yeah, but yeah, um yeah. but we don't we hey, it's, dad's uh, dad's drink a couple beers after work <laughs> exactly there we go 
our, our, our intention is to be like as real and, and as, as accessible as possible. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's cool, man. I think it's, you know, it's a good thing because, uh, you know, often I know when I was younger, looking up at individuals and especially now with social media, you see things on the internet and you don't understand the entirety of it. And so you might yeah. feel bad because you don't have certain things or you feel a certain way because you, you have like this, like fake image of what somebody might be. Um, no, so many of us are so similar, right? So, uh, yeah. we just like to have good conversations on here, hang out with our, our friends, our peers and, and open up the, you know, open the book for people. That's, that's really yeah. it, man. For sure. That, yeah. Like that, that brings up a good point. Like it's great. What you guys are doing is, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I was and kind of still on the paintball nerd when I was young. Like oh, I just devoured every piece of total information I could find, you know, I'm on PB nation after high, oh, like yeah. after school, trying to find out whatever I could. And I don't know why, but like just hearing like little snippets about this pro player, or like some gossip about that was like the coolest thing. And I think it's awesome. Like how, accessible stuff is now you know like you'd be mm -hmm. like oh that player's cool like i like their style like i like what they're about but there was never a way to really yeah like, you couldn't get any more you're just like there's a couple pictures that would be posted and like now it's like with instagram like you can dm someone right away and like mm -hmm. hopefully they'll get back to you it's super cool at, like what you guys are doing just like what we can do now it's it's awesome and you gotta kind of it's hard to like remember where you were like you know when you were that like little little paintball nerd <laughs> yeah That's so true yeah we appreciate you man and and dude honestly the honor is all ours because we get to hang out with just a ton of paintball players now we have the yeah. chat room with discord and and putting on the show and then you know just making sure that everybody knows that we're all in this together this game is is one of the greatest games in the world um it builds such tremendous community and it's it's just a blessing that we all have this sport that we can play and the community yeah. is thriving which is cool to see you know, as we keep developing this sport and trying to get it to where it deserves to be, because it, it really deserves much more respect on the name of the game than it um, has been receiving or, or the framework of yeah. which it's, it's held in people's minds. People still think we're in the woods and stuff, you know, so we're working hard to, to get out of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, speaking yeah, of game, still... go ahead. speak it when you go ahead, because this is going to change the subject a little bit. You go yeah. Ahead. I was going to say, it still has that, like, when you tell people you play paintball, you yeah. know, uh, it's totally. still kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Pin, they, one still, day, hopefully pin, we pinball, pin, yeah. paintball. What do you mean? It is. <laughs> yeah. I will say it's getting a little cooler. Mm -hmm. I, I go, I can't tell you yeah, how many times bit. I know it, it honestly is. I've been out so many times and whether it's like, you know, I'm at Jersey Mike's and the guy's like, oh my God. Marcelo, you play for Dynasty. I'm like, bro, which is you know, so that's cool. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. Or I'm at a restaurant, you know, and, and someone notices, or I'm wearing a hat, you know, that says something like, oh, wait, yeah, I know that team. Um, or I say, you know, to somebody I play paintball, and they go, oh, I've, I've seen that before. It's more now than ever before, for sure. So we're, that's cool. We're like, I, I think it's a culmination of, you know, it's been, Look, I, you, you can listen to like any motivational speaker and what do they consistently say to like businessmen, businesswomen, it's stay consistent. You know, people give up often before uh, they get the fruits of their, of their labor. And, you know, I say like often people give up after five, seven, eight years, but it takes about 10 years at least. I think it's the same thing with paintball. We've really only been in this like hard push for 20 years. It's not that long compared to other sports uh, of yeah. like what we do. It's really not that long. Um, and mm -hmm. it really it hasn't even been a full 20 years. And I think you're finally starting to see the fruits of that labor of like what we do kind of being noticed and through social media, through go sports, through what the NXL does, they do a great job marketing. I think, I think people are definitely starting to notice and ESPN, and the, you know, the, the snowball effect is going to happen. Yeah. ES sports center posted us on their damn Instagram. That's dope. Oh, that's you know? weird. They, you mm -hmm. didn't see that Tom. <laughs> Bro, nah. this is hilarious. See, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Like people okay. make fun of me all the time. I can see Frank right now laughing yeah. at me, you know, like <laughs> so, I was not a big sports guy, dude. I'm still not a sports guy. So, so <laughs> hey, right. dude, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So, Hey, I'm, I'm down. I'm down with that. But okay. So you know how we slide and pop up and shoot like you slide. Out I mean, I don't, pop up. I don't usually slide as you say, <laughs> but I got you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they posted a clip of, of a divisional guy, like sliding out to a corner and popping up and they called it the slide cancel. 
<laughs> oh yeah, it yeah. was fucking I'll hilarious. It, it was hilarious. Like, it was a slide cancel. I was like, that is the slide cancel. That's dope. Yeah, you're, like, you're yeah. sliding. You're like, nope. Oh, I'm up. I'm shooting. It's hilarious. We're actually seeing that along the, in the NFL now, where the the quarterbacks are like slide canceling Dude. and then keep moving that kind of stuff. Yeah, oh, it got it. no, it got made illegal sticks. though. That happened one time, <laughs> and and they said you can't do that. Oh, bummer. Hey, so what I was gonna <laughs> say bad. though, what I was gonna say though is about playing the game holy shit tom do you have one of those vr headsets no <laughs> bro i'm mind blown i i had a long conversation with tyler about this already so uh my niece got one they're i can't believe they're so cheap they're only 300 bucks yeah um, like the oculus or whatever yeah exactly the oculus yeah. the, the thing made by facebook damn mark zuckerberg dude, he's truly trying to take over the world i mean yeah, no it's, doubt it's no doubt alien. about it so um the oculus yeah again she got one for uh christmas so i put it on i wanted to see what it was about i knew there was a paintball game for it i just never really understood what vr was like i, I was like okay yeah. cool. it's, it's like a 3d thing i get it thought i got it so she got it and i put it on and i'm like playing this game i did this like space walk where i'm walking out on on the uss at uss uh space station tripping out because i'm afraid of heights like it feels so real i was like holy shit i have to go get one so I went and bought one, and it is the most unreal thing. I have to share this. Ty, I'm sorry you already heard this story, <laughs> but I have to share this story because it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so I put it on. I'm in my living room, and I'm like, okay, let's see what's going on. And, like, there's just so many options. You create your avatar, right? So you have your own uh, metaverse person, okay, which is nuts, super yeah. crazy. <laughs> you hear – you saw Ready Player One. Everyone saw that movie. And it was like, oh, that's not going to happen until the year 3023. No, it's here. We're, we're in that. Yeah. So, so you can like go in and there's all these different rooms, right? You can like one room has uh, the movie Free Guy playing at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can click in that room if you want to sit in that movie theater and you legitimately feel like you are in a badass movie theater with a big screen TV like massive, it, these little goggles, yeah. but you feel like you're in this movie theater with big screen TV and you see everybody else in the movie theater and you can talk to them, you interact. This little it's punk ass to the right of me, I look over <laughs> to the right, this guy starts throwing apples at me and he goes, I'm not gonna say it on air, but he starts, uh, you know, expletives towards me. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what the fuck? This you fucking jerk. Yeah, theater. 100%. And so then now I'm thinking, because the movie wasn't starting and it was past 7.30, I'm like, am I messing something up? Because it was my first time in there and everyone's yeah. like kind of giving me shit. So I look down and there's this girl avatar and she's like, laugh, like laughing and pointing above my head. And so I turn nice. around and I, I look behind me, I look behind me and- that kid that was bullying me drew a, a penis above my head. <laughs> I swear to God. Because you could like you could pull out a marker and draw in there. So people wherever can... you want. Yeah, it's like so strange, dude. I'm yeah. like laughing. I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Um, and so like, <laughs> wow, that's nuts. Then I'm like, okay, let's go check out this other room. All right, I could go to the like multiverse thing. So I go into this this universe area where you can walk around, you could buy real estate. No yeah. joke, you can buy Wild. real estate. I'm like, what? Dude. This is unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy. So I'm like, okay, so this is a, this is a whole nother world yeah. that people can live in. My point about this was that there's a VR paintball game that is so yeah. sick. It's called uh, Snapshot VR. So I get this game and you go in and you play and they have every single layout. Uh, they have layouts back until like 2010. They have a ton of layouts. It's amazing. That's crazy. But, but when the events come out, they, they put the layout up immediately. And it's like identical. So you're so you telling me I'm not going to need to fly out to play the game. You don't know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just get the just the VR. whole the whole team just needs. I love that you own the can, baby. Yeah, as the can. <laughs> the whole team just needs to get VR, and you don't even yeah. need to practice. You can just go in there yeah. and practice. But dude, it's so dope. There's like they have a league, like it's super competitive. It's fucking really that cool i'm all in man i'm gonna be playing a ton uh shout out to the snapshot vr community shout out to jesse uh this dude fab who like totally dialed this in man uh i i went i was like i didn't know what i was doing i'm terrible at the game so far but i'm gonna get good i promise it's like and you're a new it you're yeah a it new. is i told him i was like hey yeah. any d5 teams looking to pick up a guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah I need a spot yeah but They're all smack like, talking you like you're such a noob yeah. like I who is totally, this guy? Yeah, <laughs> I was I was running games with all the competitive guys. I did win a one on two. I had a couple really yeah. good shots. As I was starting to figure out the controls a little bit, 
um, like your paintball IQ absolutely translates and you communicate nice. with each other too. Like you're all in there. It's so sick, dude. It's really cool. So shout out to them. That's just a, you know, shout out to uh, snapshot VR. Love what they're doing, man. We get, we got to get everybody in there. That's a paintball sure. game in the VR yeah. space that could make paintball like do really well, you know, yeah. kids love video games. So we need to like get people playing those damn video games. That's it breaks so down dope. the barrier to like, mm-hmm. to get yes. in there. You know, yeah. Yeah. you don't totally. need the weather. You don't need the money. You don't need a bunch of buddies. You just throw it totally. on and go play. Totally. It's not expensive. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. What's your, what's your take on the metaverse that's uh, on the threshold here that it's really in culture, culturally, it's, it's huge right now. Um, what's your take on it? I don't know. I feel like we're very grassroots. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I'm optimistic about it, but uh, it's, for me, it's not there yet. You know, like I've checked out like Decentraland and all this, and maybe I'm just like not aware of like everything that is very current. Mm-hmm. Um, but with VR and everything, I think it's only a matter of time. Like in the next couple of years, I think it's going to be very ingrained in the day to day. I don't know like how, but I, I do believe it will be like, especially with Apple, they're yeah. developing a VR headset and like gloves with haptic feedback. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to do, man. It's, it's wild. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm definitely, a big nerd. I love it. It's cool. Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, I definitely see um, like VR glasses coming into play as well. So yeah. an, an interface where you, we all will have these glasses and then in the real world, there will be, you know, things that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise if you didn't have the the glasses and we're yeah. going to start to live in that kind of a paradigm like as heads well. Up display. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, I like that instead of a phone. Yeah, you know, it might it's just, you know, who knows what it's uh <laughs> what the, what the glasses are doing, but it's it's just a whole other shift that is really powerful and has a lot of weight behind it. Um we see that, you know, even Facebook changed their whole name to Meta and it's yep. uh it's a really big push that's going on which is super intriguing. It's all kind of hand in hand with like crypto and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the next five years have in store for it. But I definitely agree. This paintball game is insane. And we're probably going to see like pro level paintball players in the virtual world. Yeah. And then we're just all going to become obsolete as real paintball. players. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about like Ronnie D's on. I'm like, he's got to be yeah. You gotta be on there streaming the, the VR paintball. Dude, right you can stream it too. That's what's so cool. Is like yeah. you can literally record everything through your headset and then upload it to your computer. I That's mean, it's sick. nuts. I can't believe this thing is 300 bucks. I spent 400 bucks. I got the instead of the 128 gig, I got the 256. Yeah, you so souped I, it up. I mean, dude, I, no joke. That is a fifteen hundred dollar item. And it kind of mm. makes me like, like, yo, Zuck. You're doing this to get people addicted. It's like drug dealers. They they yeah. like give you they give you your first couple doses. You know, hey, get <laughs> yeah. hooked, and then you come back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this tech is so cheap because it is that is more technologically advanced than my iPhone. Hmm. That you pay twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, they, they've got enough money. They could even be taking a hit on it. I don't know what the tech is like, but you're right. Just get people mm-hmm. hooked, foot in the door, get them locked in. Yeah, get them and locked then in. Start selling them apps. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Oh yeah, they're, dude, the apps in there are so expensive. All the games, everything. I'm like, oh man, that's thirty bucks. That's forty bucks. Yeah. That's yeah, for sure. That's it's, a whole. And other it's racket. all automatic. That's the wild thing about the yeah. online, like yeah. with that and like Amazon, it's just one click. Click, now. click. You never, you're never getting the card out. Like you're no. never typing it in. It's just done. No. You don't have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so when you don't think about it, you don't remember it as much, you know. No. And so like next time you want to click, you just click. And then at the end of the month, you're like. Oh, that's a four thousand dollar oh. bill. All right. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I bought a lot of shit this month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. also, like the fashion world is going to be completely ingrained in this digital world as well. They're going to be selling yeah. you the hottest shoes, the hottest shirts, the hottest hats, the hottest clothes that that you can find in the metaverse as well, and and capitalizing on something that they don't have to physically make a product. You know, which yeah. is pretty insane. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's like limitless. Who knows? Yeah, I know. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we dude, will it's, see. It's it's nuts. It's a wild, wild world we live in. But I would love if we could get everybody, all PTG listeners and anyone that's hanging out to jump in the VR snapshot game. We could get like, you know, leagues. Dude, going. They already have leagues like we could build it out. That'd be sick, dude. That'd be PTG. Sick. We'll start yeah, our own. I'm, I'm with it. Snapshot yeah. VR major shout out. Oh, and. Be on the lookout for PTG World. It's going to be manifested yep. through the metaverse. We're going to have 
a whole play the game podcast world that we're going to build in there at some point. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So you'll be able to play your favorite games. You could play some paintball. You could play whatever you want. It's like this game world. So we're going to try and build. <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> yeah. But um, back to, you know, more of your story and paintball. paintball. <laughs> yep. What's uh, what's the story? What's the scoop on how you even got into this crazy game? Um, what, you know, what was the story on that? Yeah, uh, it's probably probably pretty similar to most people. Birthday I was party. like, yeah, it's a birthday party, man. My mom hated hates all types of guns. And for whatever reason, she booked a, like a, a birthday party for me and a couple of buddies. And I was like nine years old and I was terrified. <laughs> and it was just this local feel. I just remember being like so scared and the paint just, it really hurt. I swear, like they're shooting rocks back then. It just hurt so much. But um, yeah, the first couple of times it was just like birthday parties. And then um, maybe in like grade eight, year eight, whatever you guys call it in the States, uh, a few buddies of mine were just talking about paintball, like at recess, like super random. They were talking about playing tournaments. And I was like, I like, I I've played They're like, do you have a gun? I'm like, no, but like we, we started chatting. I bought a spider from like a spider, something from a flea market. And nice. then I played a, a three man tournament, like a week later. So I'd only ever played like <clears throat> random woods ball, you know, super, super mm-hmm. casual wreck. And, um, <laughs> We're playing like speedball in this like sand field at uh, Wasega Paintball where like, that's kind of where I started. Um, yeah. And then after that, it was just like, like that was, I was 13 and I didn't take a season off until COVID hit. A long, wow. So a long time. Yeah. So I started playing with that team and um, that kind of just introduced me to like the Canadian scene. Um, at that time, there was a lot of like Sunday night, Sunday night tournaments and just like smaller series other than the CXBL. So I played a lot of those. Um, and then, yeah, uh, that was Sega team had like a factory MXL team. We won our first year. I was like 14 or 15. Um, and then we won a CXBL spot and that's kind of how I yeah. got my start. Yeah. So I've been playing like competitive paintball from, from the get go. <laughs> that's awesome. Three yeah, man is man. such a, the three man style is such a great entry point for a new player. And it, was, it is, yeah. I mean, even for me, when I was young, I was, it's intimidating. Like I was 10 years old and you know, you're playing typically with people most of the time who aren't as young as you when you're getting yeah. into the tournament stuff. So. I was a wuss back then. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Wasaga beach paintball? Is that what it is? Wasaga. Yeah. So yeah. they're still around. The sand That's right. is gone. It's turf, yeah. it's turf now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like that, that field, like gave me my start, everything. Like I'm super Dude, grateful awesome. for that. Cause they it, like, I was really fortunate to play for teams that had backing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not, it's just not really around in Canada anymore. Like with Sega was, they helped us out a lot. Like I didn't have to pay for a ton. I was super young. Um, so it was great. But yeah, yeah that, that's a blessing, man. And uh, we actually were talking with them recently about heading up there. We're going to possibly be doing like a PTG training camp up there at some point um super real, cool really sweet people up there the best yeah yeah it's, it's the same same owners yeah from back then yeah i live like an hour north of that field mm-hmm. in the middle of, it's where yes. i live it's in the middle of nowhere <laughs> where i live it's uh it's like a two and a half hour drive to the airport i see yeah. thanks for some good wood, woods ball <laughs> oh man yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well hey it doesn't dude, make you, sense but i love it yeah and you you're playing now for one of the top teams in the world you know so if that's not a sign that anybody can make it from anywhere i don't know what is you know that's yeah. uh tremendous well it's like marcelo said with with the podcast and paintball and just getting up there it's just consistency like mm-hmm. i've been playing for a really long time and i've always been trying to get better every year you know i've i've always been really competitive and i've always wanted to win <laughs> yeah. like really badly whatever team i've been on um and that's just kind of kept me in it this whole time like with the distance and school and work and all the barriers just like that competitive drive and the fact that i haven't quit just enabled me to like make connections and get noticed and end up where i'm at now which is which is wild yeah Yeah, that's very surreal and you've you've won a ton of uh tournaments outside of the pro u.s league but you've never won a pro u.s event right no um second and then last year i believe we got a fifth got a third yeah close right the one there with the aftermath is really cool man that was cool yeah. 
We're so close. So close yeah, to dude. finals, at least. I mean, you and guys... even, against, even against you guys at Cup, it was, a, it was one point, it was a close game, or maybe it was two. It was a very yeah. close match. Dude, our, our matches were some of the best at World Cup. The the Heat X Factor <laughs> matches were insane. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Let, let me hear your thoughts on uh, our <laughs> madman, Rainey. Dude, I love me and me and Rainy. Rainy's my dog. We, we text and chat all the time. I play on a 10 yeah, yeah. team with him. Uh, we played, you know, with Cap Factory together recently. Um, he is a very, uh, how do you say, just in your face player. And, and that's just yeah. how he is. That's how he plays. And um, he's a phenomenal paintball player. Rainy is, you know, you guys have a, a great team, a bunch of great players that he's know how smart, to play. Man. Very smart. Yeah, and I really – I was watching a video um, today. I can't remember who it was, but I really love the way that you guys were communicating out there, the way that, you know, you guys, when you played us, when you would call a kill, you would say kill in the player's name. You would be very descriptive. You, I don't know yeah. if you guys went into the game with For that sure kind we of, did. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it helps so many people on the field when, you, when you're communicating like that it starts to really fill in all the blanks and you can make decisions a lot quicker when you're communicating like that. So um, Rainey is very intelligent, very smart. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's always, you know, trying to uh, chest bump somebody or, or, you know, do yeah. something wild and uh, it's fun. It, it makes for some exciting games and I can't wait to play more games against you guys this upcoming season. For sure. Yeah. What about you, Marcel? What do you think? Because I've talked to some people who like don't like it and they they're <laughs> not about it, you know? <laughs> I don't care. If that's yeah, your game, that's your game. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get into my head one bit. So it's yeah. it, if anything, it's gonna feel me if you do it to me. Uh I've I've mm -hmm. never I've never been overshot or talked shit to and then played worse. That that doesn't yep. happen. So if anything, <laughs> it's like sometimes I'm like, okay, that was actually the wake up I needed. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, I think there's a line that can be crossed, right? There's a line that can be crossed where it gets into the distasteful, um, unsportsmanlike uh, section. Yeah, no, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm curious. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there there is that line. So for me, it was when he when he overshot Yosh. Yosh isn't playing those games with you guys, and um, you guys, you know, he, he scored the point with six seconds to go, and he comes down and shoots Yosh like that. I'm like, bro, that's just that's just disrespectful. And if you're angry because you, you lost. Right. So, so that's not cool. If it's like in the thick of the game, like the middle of the game, right. Not at the end of the game where, you know, you know, you're done, you know, gotcha. if it's in the thick yeah. of the game where like, maybe you can get a competitive advantage or something. I mean, I get it, dude. It's sports, you know, like in football, you're going to try to yeah. hit somebody as hard as you can. And in basketball, you're going to try to dunk on somebody. You're going to, you're going to try to get in your opponent's head. I'm all about it. That's sports, but there's a, there's also like a respect in for certain players too. I mean, look, you know, again, if that was a different player, maybe I wouldn't feel, feel that way, but it's Yosh. It's fucking Yosh, dude. It's Yosh, man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know? Um, I but, love how Yosh loved it though. I oh, loved I, it. Cause I know Yosh. Cause he knew. We just, yeah, he, he's, he's like, like I won. never get it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, we won. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's he right. Feeling and, left out. And, yeah. and Yosh, Yosh balled out that point to save those extra yeah. like 20 seconds. That was he, whew. he really did. He, yeah. he did. Cause otherwise it's like, damn, you guys could easily tie that up and we go into overtime. Yeah. He's um, just there. He's just always there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's always he there. Yeah, no, yeah. Rainey's, Rainey's a pest, man. He's a master pest. He's really good at, at just really getting under the skin of his opponents. Um, I've known Rainey since I was like, shit. Yeah, I guess go, I'll go like back. That. Yeah, we, we go way back. So um, I, under, I understand him, and I appreciate him. You know, he's one of the best. So And uh, all four of us are uh, Aftermath alumni. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. wild. <laughs> totally. Yeah, no, nah, the Rain Man, dude. Funny guy, dude. I, I love him. I wish we could get him on here to just sit down and talk with him. But I love chatting with Rainey. He's definitely one of the brightest minds in the game. I, I stood up for him when when he departed from Impact, however that went down, whether he left or was cut. I don't really remember what, what happened. But I was like, man, that's uh, going to be a, a tough loss for Impact because he was a lot of fire, a lot of brain power, and a lot of, like, you know, yeah. in those gritty moments, he got a lot of grit. Rainey has a ton of oh, grit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then sure. since then, I mean, dude, you know, X Factor immediately after went on a run in 2019, won, you know, the event, won, uh, uh, well, two events. Yeah, won two events, Philly and Chicago, and then won uh, the series title. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, team's great, but Rainey had a lot to do with that, in my opinion. You know, he's, he's a baller. He's just a fucking stud out there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 
Um, but again, He's, there's there's some lines that could be crossed. But it's sports, man. You know, fair. like I don't know. Yeah. I'm not I'm, not, I'm yeah. not taking that shit home with me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about it pretty quick for sure. Yeah. Totally. He, he said, actually, I've tried getting rainy on a couple times and he's like, I don't want to give away all my secrets. You know? I know. I'm like, bro, we know all your secrets. <laughs> yeah, You're not giving them yeah. away, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but he said that um, we have a possibility for 199. Show 199. We might get rainy. He said that special. about 99, dude. He's full of shit. He's going to say 299 <laughs> after that. He said yeah. that about 99. I hit him up and did he? he's like, yeah, 100 oh, percent he did. He did. Oh, you gotta put did. some. You gotta put some money on the table, yeah. like some sort of wager. <laughs> you know, you gotta make it a game. He'll he'll be on, on eventually, dude. Tell me about some rare Pokemon yeah. cards. <laughs> there we go, dude. Yeah, his collection looks nuts. Oh you guys, yeah, he's yeah. Dude, don't oh, talk to me dude. about those cards. Jesus, I lost no, a quor man. quarter million dollars of those cards. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it got jacked. I'm from sorry. Me. Yeah, it's that painful. <laughs> um, but yeah, Rainy, we have, I do have some cards for you. We can get you some cards. We can get you a little dough. PTG will shovel out a little dough for you. You know, whatever it takes. We yeah. want to get you on the show. Hey, if the listeners really want Rain Dance on, we'll give them a little cash. Come on, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. So. We, do, we do not negotiate with terrorists, all right? We, <laughs> we don't do that here. So, so no, if you don't want to come on, you know, that's one thing. But we'd love yeah. to have him on. Rainy's a, he's a special mind. And if you've gotten to play with him, you understand he, he, uh, He's really passionate about his position. He knows mm -hmm. a lot about the game. He's been around a lot of successful paintball players, and he's become one of the best. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's going to be a huge leader for you guys. Huge, uh, huge, huge fucking factor. Oh, yeah, he was cool. Like, I, <laughs> he didn't play a ton of – I see what he did there. He, like, didn't play at all, like, in prelims. I feel like I he came in maybe in our second heat match. I forget when he started playing, you know? Yeah. But it's yeah. like he didn't skip a beat. And the oh, cool no. part for me, it's like – he's coming in and playing my spot, but there's no, like, I'm just so stoked that we have such a sick line that it's just like, it doesn't matter who, like everyone we field is nasty. Yeah. And, and I felt like I didn't feel like in, in my own head, I made a mistake in the heat game. Um, I got a penalty and you guys came, like started coming back. And I was like, mm -hmm. shit. Like if we <laughs> lose this game, I'm going to think back on that decision and uh, it's going to be bad. But like mm -hmm. he came in, he played after I got that penalty and played amazing and then went into finals. And I just like, I wasn't feeling a hundred percent. I know that's not like a good, no, that's not good, but that was the reality mm -hmm. of it. So the fact that he was like super confident and amped and the game was so close because everyone was playing so well. I was just like, I'm very glad that we have this man here. I'm glad that we have this roster. It was cool. Hell yeah. Dude, can you walk yeah. me through the game where you went to bunker D's on and he wasn't there? <laughs> Um, because <laughs> no. in, in my yeah. in my mind, I feel like I tricked you because I was calling out to Ronnie trying to trick you. That wasn't the case though. You probably there was a miscommunication or something like there that. Was. Yeah. Okay. I like I forget what went down, but I filled back and I see Ronnie. I filled back to the tower and I see Ronnie cut out as well. Yeah. And I know it's a two on two, so I'm like shooting inside from the tower. I think at you. You're in the god. That's and right. Meters, he's shooting cross, so he's just like D four D four. And I'm like, okay. Who shot, who shot Ronnie? Meter did on a okay. blind as he uh, went into D4. Like there was a clip that I saw way later. So Ronnie gets shot and the, he just runs back. Mm -hmm. So and, as he's running back, that's like at either when I'm in the tower or transitioning to the Drudo. So he, no one ever sees him leave. Yeah. Um, I got that so was lucky it. that, I mean, I was like, dude, uh, oh my gosh. It haunted <laughs> me, man. Like, cause you know, I'm like, but I'm putting you in yeah. and then I go down and I check one, not there, check the other, not there. And I'm like fully committed. Dude. And I got I lucky that I shot you. I got lucky. It was one ball in the leg. I was like, I know. I was like, Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> but honestly, I was like, yeah, fair. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done. But, but that's yeah. paintball. Honestly, dude, that, that happens. That's me so not playing like ever. And then mm. making silly mistakes too. <laughs> well, also with the, with the amount of bunkers to it, it is hard to see players walk off with, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of big obstacles that are blocking vision out there. So communication in the last couple seasons has become a whole nother monster. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's definitely changed like the way that I've played and how just like the, the game itself plays. Totally. There isn't as much as of that like cross crap no. that there used to be with the bricks. It's like very heads up, like send in it. your face. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty so much. that's what that was, man. Like the second I the second I came around the corner, I was like, You're like shit. Oh. Yeah. And I keep seeing people post that clip. I'm like, oh. like, 
Come on. Because it, it kind of yeah. looks cool if you don't know what's happening. But I yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. And I, like I said, I got lucky too because you were flashing through the cuts of the Dorito. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm I knew I miss. could. I'm like, I can get him. I just yeah. put Tyler and I can get him. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> dude, lucky on my part. But yeah, and then um, you won a one on one, though. Yeah. Against Meter right after that. Like, dude, that, that video has good? like. 15 million views on tiktok that one went oh, crazy the, like this the snapshot like yeah. you and meter fighting yeah that one wow. went berserk i know yeah i got media man he's pumping him out dude he's got a quarter of a million followers he's now. blowing it up he's blowing it up yeah stunting he's building this whole new uh spaceship for for running all of his um you know film and and photos and everything the computer that he's building right oh, yeah. now. Oh yeah, he actually bought some parts from me. It's gonna be beast. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> insane. Oh, so you're into building computers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's, so what I do now, um, I have a photography business. So I do commercial photography and video, like making small commercials and promotional content for companies. Dude, and then that's I also awesome. make wedding. I also do wedding films and photography. That's like the other fifty percent of it. Nice. Yeah, so I make Very my nice. own schedule. Um, no more shift work. Yeah. And I get to play around with like cool cameras and expensive Dude. computer tech and all the cool stuff. Oh, yeah. that's rad. <laughs> Has it been going well for you? Yeah. Even with COVID and like restrictions and cancellations, I like, I, I had a good job before, but I've kind like, I've surpassed what I would have made um, yeah. at my last job in the first year. So perfect. Nice. It's good. <laughs> and and yeah. people are getting married left and right ever since COVID, yeah. you know, like, it was crazy yeah. with 2020. Nobody, you couldn't really get together or have any of those things. So now everyone's getting yeah. together and, and tying the knots. I'm like booked up next year and I'm starting to book for like 2023. Like, oh, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it's good. Way to go. That's awesome. Yeah, man. yeah totally. Yeah. Dude, super awesome. Oh, man, yeah. so, so Tom, what are your, your goals with X Factor this year? What do you think's realistic uh, achievements? What, what's your personal goals? You know, what, what's your intention for the 2022 season? Ooh, um, my intention, I guess, and it, it just ties into the team goals. It's like to, to be the best team we can be, I need to kind of bring my A game as I sit here drinking a beer. But um, <laughs> no, I've been, uh, other Cheers. than today, I, I've had a- It's January I've got 5th. Like a, it's okay. Yeah, I've got a, a diet plan. I've been working out a lot more. My plans to be in just a lot better shape than I have been in the past. Like, I don't know. I'm a tall guy. I'm not super quick. I can be faster. I can be in better shape. And I kind of want to bring that to the table just to, to be the yeah. best I can be for the team. Nice. Um, I think, I don't know, a win is, is a realistic expectation for the team. Like it's, we're right yeah. there. We have all the pieces. We just need to make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. I'm super excited. I don't want to like get ahead of ourselves, but like we should, we should be winning events and we're very close right on the nip it up those heels myself i like it. <laughs> so i'm excited man yeah Dude, we got there's a fire. lot i mean this is gonna be the toughest year yet are you kidding me i mean yeah. he is gonna be in full form you know now tyler's had like almost a full season with them so you guys are gonna be really comfortable impact yeah. kind of had like a weird year but yeah, also new pieces dude they have like their team is fucking stacked and the way mouse yeah. is playing i mean if he continues that like they're going to be tough. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with the Russians. Very curious if they're going to be back or even weaker. Yeah. Um, who knows? Uh, Do we have any any news on what's going on in that camp? No, none. With the uh, Russians? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, don't, I don't know anything about what's going on. I mean, the only thing I know is their Instagram released a couple, like a month or two ago that they're going to be playing in the U.S. But And they're doing everything yeah. they can to get everybody visas. But that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. I haven't really talked to any of them. Um, probably should reach out. I would like to have, you know, Malloy or, or Smotrov on, on the show. I know Smotrov's in Florida right now. So there he's we go. staying out here. So I know he's going to be able to play. I'm good, actually. Um, good deliveries. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> but, that uh, service. That service. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, that's what it's all about right here, man. Yeah. Um, and shout out to the tall paintball players. You know what I mean? It's uh, Someone's got to do it. We're in here yeah, getting it. Screw you guys. Dude, I might, <laughs> yeah, it might, it might be even more advantageous this year with the bunker kits. I don't know. Dude, but they not look just like this tall year, boy since, kits. Since they, it, it's more advantageous to be tall now. Absolutely. Because even the snake is never small. They always have the big bricks there. Yeah. So it's a tall person's game now. It 100% hmm. is a tall person's game. Yeah. 100%. Being able to shoot over the wedges and the bricks is Huge. Nice. You can see the whole field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole field. Yeah. I get in there and I'm, I can only play two sides. Like it's, you know, you feel lost. I want to come over the top and like, 
if it's if it's cold out and it's a little deflated, I can see over it. Otherwise, yeah. I'm toast. So I see yeah. you. I see you giving them jump shots too. I yeah, see you. I give yeah. them yeah. jump yeah, shots. Throw a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's scary. Like, oh, jump up. Oh, oh, come back down. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, no, man. It's um, it, it's definitely uh, uh, advantageous to have a little bit of height. I wish I was a couple inches taller. That'd be nice. I wish I was a baller. I wish I was, I was a little bit taller. <laughs> yeah, cue it. Play I don't, it. I, don't, I don't wish the baller part. I already got that in the bank, baby. Yeah, you're not bad. You're not bad. Um, I wonder, I'm curious to see the new bunker kit that they have rolling out um, and uh, and see the size on these and see, you know, these yeah. the, the, the mini brick um, and the, the other bunkers that they have coming out. I'm really excited to play this new field layout. See what, are, what are they getting rid of? Are they removing any pieces? Yeah. Is it the they're, wedges? No, they're removing four tall cakes. Mm -hmm. So all the okay. tall cakes are gone. They can go. The, the <laughs> I love the tall cakes. So I can see why you <laughs> nah, hate them. Yeah. Them see, that's like, like now you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're hosing me even more. And they, re, <laughs> they, they replaced it with uh, four mini bricks and oh, two no. mini wedges. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Super strange. Um, I, I mean, Everybody has been talking about them removing some bunkers and they added bunkers. It's kind of crazy. I, I don't know. I'm excited. They yeah, look dude, fun. The bunkers do look fun, but fudge. Why are we using be, all these bunkers? It's chaos, man. It's crazy. I know. It's going to, yeah, it's going to be we wild. Need like one of those, we need like one of those bricks on the field, rather, like instead of, yeah, totally. Four totally, essentially totally counting the wedges. It would change. Yeah. It would change a lot. The, the game style, the way, and, Marcelo, I don't know why you want anything to change the way you guys are playing That's on these true. fields. Um, no one's sitting cross on you. <laughs> yeah. Heads up all day. Yeah. It's uh, no, and it's not though. It's not you, you get into so many of these, these uh, games where you can't see heads up like at world cup. You could world cup was amazing. I, it was such a fun Dorito side. Cause it was traditional. And a lot of the bunkers were like kind of over on the snake side. Yeah. But, but it, it's like when they have all those big bunkers at the 50, it's man, it takes away so much skill and strategy. It's just, who has the nuts to close their eyes, run to the 50 and like take the leap of faith to the other side and get a couple bodies. And those are yeah. seen as like the best players in the sport because they get the most kills. And it's like, that's not the case. It's the easiest job to do actually, you know, and it's taken a lot of the skill out in my opinion, you know, uh, maybe I'm just an old salty, you know, person <laughs> now that's like, man, I, I like it a little bit, you know, the way it was, but yeah, it makes for some great yeah. film the the you know the casts are really fun to watch with everybody running rampant out there um and as a team you have to go into events with a certain awareness of that as well you can't you can't play a traditional no. old style paintball out here you yeah. know yeah you got to go yeah for it's it. making people yeah exactly it's like it's definitely mm -hmm. where it's like my bread and butter is just like usually sitting back you know yeah. i'm more of a defensive player it's like to be effective, I can't, you can't just rely on like your one gear. You have to work on all of them. And like, you gotta be, you gotta be ready to go in there and, and throw hands and play at like that other gear that you might not normally uh, totally. operate at. So yeah, it's cra fun. It's crash and bash them. It's, it was a, definitely a fun year of paintball with uh, 2021. And I know it's going to be crazy too. The layouts have been amazing. You know, Jason has been working really hard and the whole the whole gang they work really hard at giving us good layouts that are going to be fun for people to watch as well good. so we put it on a good show yeah yeah i'm excited for it hell yeah yeah we got we got three practices coming up uh in february one nice. of you guys i forget who else we're playing there we go maybe uh, i think the latin latin saints is that the name yep latin saints They're coming out now yeah the, the new squad be on the lookout yeah. for some big news um, that'll be coming from those guys. They're, you know, they're going to be coming in heavy and trying to yeah. win events. And um, yeah, they're they're get, trying to get players. They're mm -hmm. getting them. Absolutely, yeah. The uh, they're also sponsored by HK, which is cool. It's like a little family um, partnership that I'll be able to, you know, probably do some events with those guys as well, and and really learn more about their organization. I don't even honestly, I don't know where the team is kind of based out of or anything like that i know nothing about it man yeah yeah same here that'll be exciting totally yeah but it's Marcella, cool. you guys are swapping up sorry man oh go ahead i was gonna say you guys are switching up but you're not with hk anymore is that correct yes you're with jt now? yeah we signed with jt Ooh, OG which is now pretty yeah. dope dude i mean i'm not oh man. yeah like, my god i love jt there. stuff man i've worn I tons of gear jt's just like the og iconic yeah. straps i like the the, the whole strap, man. 
It is exactly. I know. You know, pay your pay your respects. Exactly. Yeah. It is. I'm not gonna wear it at the tournament, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it in practice and just uh you know pay my respects. I got a dope little combination coming in for the first nice. Event. Yeah, well, it's uh, sick. I like that you can customize and stuff. And you got new stuff too, Ty. Uh, new oh masks. yeah, yeah, dude. It's Gosh. dope. HK is always working really hard to give us the best stuff. And um, Archie actually sent you over <clears throat> like a yeah. little care package. Yeah. yeah, that was from Kid Arch. Absolutely. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, That's he's awesome. the JT Lord, I guess. Yeah, he's the hookup. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm like, man. He's I was too indecisive to pick a strap, man. He's like, yeah. pick one. I'm like, ah, yeah. there's like 50 of them. I don't yeah. know. I'm not yeah, picking yeah, any. Yeah, God, he's good. Hey, Marcelo, I've been meaning to talk about this with you. I will take all your clothes, like your HK clothes, any spare HK stuff you got. <laughs> you can just send that right on over. Bro, I just took so much of it to Goodwill. Oh, dude, come I, on. <laughs> I do still have some. I saved a bunch of like hats. I saved some stuff to give away that I haven't worn. Some like I had a bunch of like yeah. HK stuff uh, yeah. to give away in one of the PTG GOAT meetings. But there we go. Um, awesome. Yeah, I took a I took a ton of it to Goodwill. Dude, some people are going to be blessed with style. Yeah, sure. yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah a ton. dude, it was so hard for me to get this stuff to Goodwill. So look, Tuesday, I, I went to three different places. The first place I went to, I looked on my phone, says closes at 5 p.m. It was 4.30. I show up and it's just like a, a closed uh, container box. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, just drop shit. it in there. No, yeah. but you can't, you can't drop it in. It was closed. Like there's people there Ooh. during work hours. So Actually I, closed. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, God. Dang it. Okay, let me go to this other place. So I drove like 20 minutes to the other place that was supposed to be open on the phone. It says they're open. It said, oh, <laughs> closed for drop-offs Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I'm like, okay, fine. And so then yesterday yeah. I went to one Make place that was like 30 minutes. I couldn't drop it off there either. I was like, okay, I'm not going to any other places. I'm going to go back to that place. It said closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'll go back there Thursday morning. So I went there and actually just dropped it off today. Finally <laughs> like, got it man. done. I was just yeah. trying to give a bag of clothes away. Yeah. Like make it <laughs> easy for me. Bag man. Of clothes away. Yeah. It's true. Good thing. Good thing you got that Tesla, you know? Um, yep. Yep. Driving me all over the place, you know, shout out one yep. time. <laughs> I'm actually, um, I'm going to be going to, speaking of HK, I'm going to be going to the HK headquarters very soon and, uh, and doing a show with Marky. They have a oh, podcast sweet. that they're doing as well. So, um definitely be on the lookout for that we're going to be doing some fun stuff i should have a new signature series line as well drop in this season Ooh. so be on the lookout nice, for some man. some hotness there that'll be sick yeah. tommy boy it's time to dive into some of the questions we have our iconic question from quinn nadu and then we have some questions from the discord uh the iconic question is tom coming into the x-factor organization right as one of their founding members exits the team leaves a big role to fill how do you feel X Factor will adapt and evolve their style of play? And where do you fit into that? How do I think it will adapt and evolve our style of play? Mm -hmm. I think it, it'll just give, like, it's a big opportunity for a lot of the players on the team. You know, we got new guys coming in, like, like LJ, um, Dimitri, like having a huge season, like you said, um, and, uh, and Jesse Stevens. Like yeah. it's a big opening on the, on the Dorito side. And we have a lot of, a lot of skilled players that can fill that role. Um, the question is just going to be like, who, who's that guy, you know, who's going to step up and be mm -hmm. that consistent force on the D side. That's, that's the big question, but we have a lot of people who are fully capable of it. I'm just kind of excited to see um, who that is, you know, and, and it's not always going to be the same guy, but I, I'm really excited for that. Um, yeah. In terms of our play style though, it's, it's, it's wild. Like we just have a lot of depth and versatility in the players that we have. Um, we have one of the best snake players in the league, in my opinion. And in terms of like where I fit in that, um, I think that like, I, I'm a back player, <laughs> I can control the field, but I believe that like my skill set comes in the form of just like communication and, and calmness and like the ability to be aggressive when needed, you know, that's not my bread and butter, but if we need to get stuff done quick, like I, I know how to get it done. And I, I don't know, I have that fire. I want to get it. You know, <laughs> I oh, want to yeah. run down and bunker people. That's like, that's what I live for. I'm sitting in the back shooting a lane for most of the game. But if I have the ability to get up there and dunk on someone, like there's nothing I want to do more. Um, yeah. And I'm always looking to set that up. So that's kind of where I fit in. Uh, I'm just like a, a more tame rainy. I'm not going to overshoot you <laughs> as much. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, I don't know if I touched on everything in that question. Um, that was good. No, that yeah. was yeah. really, like, good. really was confident about the team. Yeah, and I love how you, uh, you know, call it a dunk because that is paintball's dunk. Got you know? it, man. Yeah, it is. It's the fun. It's the best, dude. That's what we live for. Yeah. Um, I got a question before we get into the PTG World Discord chat questions. Your jersey number and what it is, and if it has any significance or or why you chose that number for your jersey number. I've just had it forever, man. It's the first, uh, there is no significance to it. I think when I picked it when I was younger, I was just like, lucky number seven, that's me. And uh, like I've been it. rolling like with it, it ever since, yeah. yeah I was trying a... to get them to put uh, put my first name on the jersey. Because I've like to this day, people are like, when are you <laughs> going to get your own jersey? And half the time, like most of them are serious. I'm like, I man, know. Like, that's guest is my last name. Dude, yeah. I'm like, put Tom up there, man. <laughs> put it up there. Put T Speaking... guest. Speaking of that, uh, Pate, he says, do you think it's weird Jesse Stevens still doesn't understand your last name as guest and you aren't just a <laughs> guest player? On yeah, you know, we're trying. We're, I've been working with Jesse. Like, he's coming around to the concept of it. Um, yeah. So it'll take time. I it love does. Jesse, man. He's great, dude. It's so good. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. All right. So, Marsh, you want to hit one of the uh, PTG World? discord yeah 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 right. um okay from alex harlington and he's a fellow canadian so i think this is why he's asking oh, the question but how was the visa process uh to be able to play in the u.s during this ongoing pandemic yeah so there wasn't a visa process because i'm not getting paid i'm not technically working um i see yeah okay not officially you know there not officially go. getting paid <laughs> so it's pretty go. easy um the passport i'm trying to think of what um i pretty much just say i'm going down to play paintball mm -hmm. uh they'll they'll try and ask you questions about money and things like that um nice. to be like completely open like i've never made money from paintball teams that i've played with um i'll get guns here and there but there's never been a salary i've never been one of those guys i've paid mm -hmm. a lot out of pocket over the years i've been very fortunate to have it very discounted where it's like flights will be covered i'll get some cash here and there you know like i'm not losing money but i'm also not yeah. making coins so there, there's just something to add to that in terms of, yeah. well you deserve it man you're a great player and uh you know you bring a lot to a team um texas hammer in the ptg was wondering how does it feel to return to x factor you kind of already hit on that so we'll go with big daddy uh <laughs> <laughs> what was it big like daddy yet. yeah what was it like to guest on x also how critical were the pod runners to your matches at cup on a scale of essential to irreplaceable oh irreplaceable there like you go. just <laughs> smooth, you know, in and out <laughs> fastest guys I've ever seen. Hell and yeah. I don't remember the beginning of that question. Cause I was laughing about the pod runner part. Oh, it was yeah. another, it was, was another, it? <laughs> it was another guest joke. <laughs> oh my God. I missed it. Oh my head. He said, uh, what was it like to guest star? To guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the pit crew is so crucial. Yeah. So damn crucial. Truly mm -hmm. is. All right, from our boy Bat. Shout out to Bat. He's making some dope stuff right now. Everybody, stay tuned. Bat yep. B A T. Oh, what's his Instagram? Actually, I want to find it real quick. I don't want to follow mm -hmm. him. I think it's Bat. Uh, he's been Bat. .pb. He's been going. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Bat. Yeah. Pb on Instagram. Shoot him a follow. He's he's got a cool little front page. He's gonna make some dope headbands. He got some great denim things like that. Shout out to him. His question is Tom, and I, this is a question for me too. Are we going to see more from your vlog in 2022? <laughs> oh, probably, man. Yeah, there I've uh, I've been cooking one up for nice. for World Cup. I have some footage. Um, just with what I do right now, I'm always on my computer editing photos and videos. So it kind of like took the fun away from the blog sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I plan on bringing it back for sure. It's going to be different um, than what it was before. I I put a lot of time in on things that looking back on don't really matter like little logos mm. that would flash up and like having the perfect music it's like people just want to see what you're doing they, mm -hmm, they want to know sure. like you know they want to see the behind the scenes they don't need all that flashy stuff so that's kind of my approach to it um yeah for this coming season yeah i got that's, one i got one in uh, in the works currently and i'm gonna make more next next season for sure that's so true people spend so much time like doing the editing and like you said the music yeah. and all the Trying to make things. It perfect yeah but as we've yeah. seen with rye guy it's the people want that raw in depth, exactly. you know, film. And like you said, the behind the scenes. So that'll be really cool to see. We can't wait for that. Yeah. 
All right, yeah, the, got... the camera tech nerd in me is always like, oh, it needs to be exposed, right? And the color, it's like, yeah. oh, no one cares. No one cares, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's good to have that background as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Totally. Um, we got Shadow. Shadow always has the funniest questions. All right, he's like, I know you... Shadow. Yeah, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? And you can't say people. But that's obvious. Right? It's an animal. Ooh, uh, we're animals too. I'd be some yeah. sort of bird for sure. 100%. I'd be flying. I'd be flying yeah. around. I don't know what type. Yeah. Shadow, please forgive me if it's not uh, specific enough. But a <laughs> bird. <laughs> not a seagull. I know that. Any other bird. <laughs> Dude, imagine being like a falcon or an eagle. Just, yeah, something sick. You know, crazy. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> ripping around eating fish yeah. just dominating that's cool that um that they're able to get in that discord and, and ask questions and whatnot sweet yeah it's super dope it's dude i best. love love when they get involved um mm -hmm. our boy chris tucker uh one of the ptg mods uh tom guess when you played on aftermath there seemed to be a big difference with the team from semi-pro to pro we all know hinman left but is there anything else that seemed to cause issues with aftermath their first year pro it's actually a good question, man, because again, you know, I, and this is something I did want to dig into is like, you know, you guys came out so hot and then the team, I think lost like 20 games in a row or something, something. Yeah, like man, that. it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> like what, what, what happened? No one stepped up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we lost players. And as I touched on briefly before, um, it was just a really weird, it's a weird vibe. No one yeah. was buying in. I, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was like the, you can't fault John for it, but at times I think that people just lost, lost faith in coaching. That and sense. yeah, but it, it's weird at that level, you know, like even if you're not 100% um, on board with what the coach is doing, like the, we, we knew enough as players, we have enough experience where we should have been able to, we should have came together and fixed that ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the type of guy that was like, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. Like he was open to input, but people were just like kind of done with it. And it, mm -hmm. it was wild. I remember, mm -hmm. I remember one tournament, I couldn't come to any practices, but I was still going to come. It was like, I'll pod, I'll help. I'll do whatever. Um, didn't come to a single one before played like two points. I think it, maybe against you guys. And it rained like at the event. And then I was like starting like three points into the tournament this is an example of like people not stepping up and is it was really weird yeah yeah hmm. i don't know i don't know yeah. what it was but it was not a good it wasn't well, a good vibe that year for sure there, there's always a lesson in everything you know and there's always things that we can pick up and and move forward with and become better and you know sometimes it's ugly sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's not pretty but um i'm sure everyone learned a tremendous amount from that experience and moving forward it all made you guys better paintball players in the long run yeah, the ones that stuck around. A lot of yeah. people like that team. Like a lot of people quit. Yeah, done. you know. Yeah, they don't. They don't even play anymore. Barga, uh, yeah. Baldwin. What's he doing? Yeah. I see. Yeah, like what? Man, what are the, all the guys yeah. doing? Uh, Baldwin is. Um, he's young, but like he's maybe twenty-one, if that. Oh wow! Um, so he's still got a lot, a lot of life ahead of him. He's mm -hmm. um into cars. He was doing um some sort of schooling with mechanics. Um, so I'm happy for him. Like he's happy. He's in a good place. And, uh, good. Barga, he is same thing. He, he's working a ton. He's got a lady. Um, he's welding a lot. I'm trying to think yep. of who else. Um, I haven't talked to Chris Cat in a while. He was on SD. Oh, dude, I see um, Chris Cat multiple times that, a, a week. Yeah, we go guy. golfing all the time. I think yes. I'm going to go out to Montana with him next weekend. Tell him I say what's up, man. I, yeah, I will. That kid. I will. He's, he's cool. amazing. One of the best people in the world. That's yeah, awesome. Who, who am I missing there? Um, the Les was on the squad for a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's still ripping. I think he's with, is he with Revo? You make that transition? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Frank mm -hmm. with Revo. Yeah. No. Just a few no, people. Frank, just kind of Frank's back with. on Aftermath, bro. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Right yeah. Back on edge. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Back. yeah Frank, Frank, LJ. I don't know who else. Oh, ho. <laughs> oh, ho. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude. There's some bits of big, Frank. dude. This has been from 2021 into 2022 has been a whirlwind of like shifts it's yeah. been crazy it's, oh yeah yeah it's fun dude it's, it's exciting insane. it's good it shit. is i like it
All right, we got the Mole King. Love the name. He's Shout deaf. out to Mole King. He's one of the new PTG goats. What he up, just signed Mole up King? tonight. Just got in the Discord. Here we go, my man, Mole King. Yep. Get ready for all the action. I love that he got in first night and is asking questions. Yes, sir. And he actually is uh, does Tank Dangle as well. And and um, okay, you know, puts those, puts that's those Tank together. Dangle. Yes, bro. Tank Dangle yeah. is so dope. I yeah. got two of these right here. And actually, Tyler, one of these is for you. I keep telling you, I oh, got nice. this for you. Yeah. Tank tank. Let me. I gotta get. There we go. So, um, I love any sort of paintball customization. I don't care what it is. It's it's yeah. all cool. Props he's, to you, man. He's having fun, and we just love the community, man. We this this whole Discord. When we when we first started this thing, we were like, oh yeah, we'll add a Discord just to kind of beef it up. We didn't even really think that that we were gonna like use it, and it has become yeah. the greatest thing we've ever done. Um, just because of the connectivity, the like it's straight so on. Quick. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one yeah. conversations with like just everyone in the paintball world. There we go, Marsh for the YouTubers. Yeah, so 100%. So I'm sending one of these to you. This is from Chris Tucker. He gave this to me at World Cup to give nice. to you, and I st I've still just been sitting on it. Um, there we go. Do, I'm sorry. Do they also work as earrings? You ever rock them? To the club? <laughs> I guarantee you, you could. I think my earring hole is closed though. I don't think I got that dude. no more. Maybe that's my that's nose a new ring. Look, I think. Put it. Put it. That's put it a my new nose. look, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Nose dangle. Do the nose dangle. <laughs> ear, ear dangle. Uh-oh, his, yeah. his headphones are dying. Oh, I'm just swapping no. them out. He's been okay, swapping. Nice. Good man. Yeah, he's yeah. got it. Thank goodness. Rusty didn't have the, boys the swap there, technique. I, I downloaded it before. I told him. Tom, cool. sorry. We're almost done, brother. We've got a few more questions. Oh, you're you're good. And we're, and we're ready. We'll join the party after. <laughs> um, wait, yeah. did we ask Mo King's question? Not yet. No. So um, he says, uh, Tom, would you rather be respected by the underground or known in the mainstream? That's his question. Ooh, I'd say the underground. There we go. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's sometimes the mainstream. Eh? Yeah. I don't always agree. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm thinking like, I'm thinking commentators and they usually just kind of roll. They, they ride the same story over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I feel like the underground might be a little bit more accurate sometimes. I know it's up. Yeah. Well, the paintball players that we all know, they know. who the hitters are you know yeah like yeah. i sometimes i don't mean to knock people i watch the webcast and some people are being talked about on specific teams and i'm like but that guy his name is never mentioned and he uh -huh. is filthy you know yeah. like because like, there isn't a story behind him but the underground will know that story mm -hmm. agreed shout out yeah. to the underground let's go shout out. Yeah. Yeah. all right shout out to fab this is i, like fab. I was talking i was talking <laughs> It was a good question. Shout out to Mole King. Keep bringing the fire every show, please. Shout out Let's to go. Fab. This is from um, Snapshot VR, my man. He goes, hey, Tom, as a pro player who has done an excellent job in the past of sharing their experiences on YouTube, do you feel like making the videos has exposed you to opportunities you may not have otherwise had? I know you took a step back about a year ago. Do you see yourself making more in the future? I know you kind of answered that part, but the opportunity yeah. part's a great, great question. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that was a part with, with meter. Cause I, I know we had talked a lot about the vlog at the time, oh, when, yeah. like we first met yeah. um, when he, when he picked me up that day and hooked me up, that's kind of like how he knew who I was. And I guess knew that I wasn't a weirdo or assumed <laughs> right I wasn't. There, I that's, am. Yeah, that's so like that, that's how I met him. And that, probably played a role in me getting in it getting yeah. on x factor at least being a name that was considered so yeah i guess indirectly for sure that's called outliers man yeah absolutely you make one connection for a certain reason and it leads to some kind of opportunity like that awesome yeah so that's dope oh we got did it hurt with the question <laughs> shout out it, paul yeah shout out paul he said tom this your boy did it hurt what would you choose and only choose one loyalty <laughs> or respect Loyalty or respect. Ooh. That's to a, me, the they're same like, thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, my man Paul, we got to get on your show and talk about this. By the way, everybody, shout out to Did It Hurt Paintball. Check him out on YouTube. He's got his own podcast as well. He's super yep. dope. But yo, Paul, that question, what's up with that? Because it's both yeah, it's kind of like is respect. You know, like I, I guess I guess respect. Loyal. I guess respect because sometimes like if someone has to like leave a squad or they make some decision, but mm -hmm. they they're respectful with it you know mm -hmm. especially i'm thinking of trying to think of paintball you know i can still respect you if you're yeah. not loyal in the paintball sense I not the same in other relationships but in the paintball <laughs> sense <laughs> i can you know like it's like this is for you this is for your family 
you're fourth cut forthright with what your intentions are. You're not doing snaky stuff, talking behind the team's back. Yeah. yeah. That's I can still respect you. I, I wouldn't want someone to be loyal to me if they didn't respect me. Cause then they feel like a slave, maybe, you know, like maybe they're yeah, in that position. Deep question. Yeah. That actually, is, now I'm, now I'm kind of seeing close, like, shit, man. wait, okay. Maybe this is actually a really good question. That's no, what I was going to say. We got to tune into, into Paul's podcast. Yeah, you're right. They could be loyal, but this, they could just, yeah, they, could, they could be loyal. Not respect they, you. Right. And it's like, okay, yeah. so they're loyal, but like, you don't respect me. And so that's all, that's a dirty, dirty mm-hmm. business. right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude. I, oh, he's taking us, taking yeah, us deep tonight. He is. He is. The wormhole. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah Actually, funny. um, Paul, shout out. Thank you so much for the question. And he are they just asking had... them live? Like, do they listen in the discord? No, no, no. no. Okay. I was yeah, we, we let him know the guests we're going to have on. Well, Tyler does. He puts a nice little post together. And then the uh, if you're, if you're part of the, <laughs> if you're part of the, <laughs> if you're part of the PTG community, you get to ask questions. Your questions are going to be heard. So, you know, the only right. ones we don't, don't ask and, and, you know, hope people don't take offense, but it's like, if we've already talked about it in the show, we're not going to yeah, ask yeah. It again. It's just kind of redundant. Right. But, um, but it's Dude, great. It, like if they to ask build on that too, and not take away from the show, like if you watch these shows and whoever it is, send them a DM after, you know, if, mm-hmm. if while you're watching it, like, I want to know about that and guarantee oh, yeah. like 90% of people who are on the show will hit you back up. Of yeah. course. bro. Let's get Absolutely. you in the discord. You want to come hang out? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it on this, but like, send me, send me the info. I'm, I'm always on my computer. Yeah, Absolutely. Sick, dude. Cool. We'll yeah. send you an invite and uh, everybody go check out. Like you said, um, did it hurt podcast? He actually just had the goat squad, which is our like elite tier community members in the discord. He had them all on his latest podcast and they're all talking in there, which is really cool. Yeah. So go check it out. Um, I think it is, let's see, you got one. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's me. It's me. Um, all right. Alpha black. We already kind of covered the border crossing, all that. This is great. CM Harry is a good question. Favorite team you played on. Question number one. Question number two is, who do you wish you played with? Ooh, favorite team and who do I wish I played with? Um, my favorite team would be Distortion, for sure. You know, mm-hmm. like my favorite season would be with Aftermath when we won Semi-Pro. Just because, like, yeah. we were, we were dominant. It was, it was awesome. But my favorite team was, uh, was Distortion because it was just all the local guys, you know, um, we won like a world cup one year. That was kind of like our highlight as super exciting in maybe 2016, 2017. And those were guys that like I've known forever, um, grew up playing with like locally. And it was just like a homegrown team uh, that like we definitely paid our dues and it felt great. Like the guys that I'm with now, like I just, I know through PayPal, I wouldn't be uh, eight hours away from home on a ski trip, like a last minute ski trip. If I didn't play on that team, like that's how I know those dudes. Um, a lot of them came to my wedding. We talk all the time. Definitely my favorite team. Distortion was uh, sweet. And it was just a fun team. Like a lot of hilarious personalities like Scott. Scott Graham still plays. He's hilarious. Mitch, Drew Guppy, like Alfred. Uh, he still plays. Barga. Yeah, Garrett. I'm probably missing people. I apologize, <laughs> but I, I love that squad. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's the grassroots, and, you know. That was part two. A player. Um, yeah, a player that you wish that you could play alongside or, or uh, that you wish you played with. Mm, I feel like you got to say like OG Ollie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair. Yeah. He, he, like in his prime, I was just curious what he's like. I feel like yeah. he's a different man now, but um, probably Oliver for sure. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He's an animal right. out there on that field, dude. It's, uh, you know, Marcella and myself have, been so fortunate enough to really pick his brain and Mm -hmm. and like know how his his outlook on the game is which is um really special but he's an animal dude that guy is the beast he will eat your face the guy wants to win like more than any you know he's got that fire real fire yeah like i I kind of i'm he was a great paintball player really amazing like decision making and things like that but as i've played for a long time it's just like okay everyone's kind of like once you get near the top everyone has the same abilities yeah. I'm curious, but just like about the mentality and the energy that he brought, it seemed mm-hmm. wild and it's cool. Yeah. It just seemed like a cool guy. But for sure. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He's tapped in with the the energies. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, 
he's really into the flower of life. He's really into, um, you know, holistic healing and, and all those types of really yeah. natural, natural ways of living, which is, uh, you know, it's refreshing. There's a lot of, it's like chemical warfare kind of. And, and, you know, he's, he's really made a voice about, you know, going natural and he's, he's fighting for that, which is really beautiful to see. Um, we got the Dorfster 420. <laughs> That's his name here. Um, he wants me to ask you um, in regards to being a bit of a journeyman and, you know, playing for several organizations. And uh, now that you're on X factor, how has being in multiple organizations benefited you and your progress throughout your pro career? I think it's just like a, a connections thing, you know, mm -hmm. just being seen by different eyes. You know, when you, one dude's on the same team for a while, you'll, you'll recognize them. But as people move around, it just exposes you to, to other groups and connections. Um, mm -hmm. And you kind of, all right. And you just <laughs> grow those relationships, right? Like Absolutely. when I was super, when I was young, um, I stayed with like a very tight knit, tight knit group of guys. And I didn't like to talk to other guys, you know, I was really shy and I feel like that hurt me like early in my paintball career, but as you grow up and <laughs> you become a little bit more comfortable with who you are, you start making those relationships and you realize like, Oh, like that guy's cool. That guy's super cool. I never talked to him for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, playing on other teams just kind of exposed me to different groups of guys. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's wild that we're talking. <laughs> yeah, for real, yeah. man. It's yeah. it's amazing, and we love your journey, dude. We're we're excited for you know everything that you you've put a lot of hard work into getting to where you're at, and we got to support. It, you know, it's all it's it. all love. When we're obviously we step on the field, we're competitors, but in this space, yeah. as yeah, in, you know, it's just all love for paintball, truly. And we just want to see yeah. this thing thrive. And we need more people like you, more people that are going to do the social media, that are going to you know be doing that the YouTube and all that kind of good stuff to get the lens brighter yeah. for people out there. My advice too, like with like what I was saying before with the channel and like perfectionism, it's like, it doesn't need to be like that. You yeah. don't need expensive equipment. Like I went down that rabbit hole. I spent a lot of money. I use it now, but like <laughs> for paintball and things like that, use an iPhone, yeah. flip that thing sideways, shoot it in 4k or whatever it is. And just like record your tournaments, like put stuff out there for the world to see, even if it's not great. Like mm -hmm. it's just more stuff on YouTube or Facebook or TikTok that somebody might see and it'll help the sport and That's guarantee it, like yes. years from now, you're going to look back and like maybe your buddy's dog on you or make fun of you for having the camera out now, which mine did, but like, <laughs> you're going to look back and watch those videos and be so happy that you recorded that like stupid little practice way yeah. back. You know, I have so much of that. And I love watching it because it's, I don't know. It's sweet. It's, it's it's cool being able to capture the memory and look yeah. back and be like, I remember that tournament. I remember this practice. Like that was hilarious. Yeah. Record it. It's meaningful, dude. It's, it's, those, yeah. they're valuable moments. Every moment is super valuable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a sucker for that stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, keep filming, keep filming and, and we'll keep boosting it, brother. Oh, absolutely. We will. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get back to it. <laughs> yeah. You got to, you know, shoot. Yeah. We need more paintball content. I agree. That's it. I definitely agree to, to everyone listening out there. Just, you know, make it happen. Just uh, get out there and mm -hmm. do it. Don't be afraid. Yep. Um, all right. My last question is from 4BZ. On the show, mentioning flow state a lot and how it affects the game. What helps you get into that flow state? Also, what has happened during a tournament to get you out of flow state? And how do you overcome that to turn up the heat and try to get that win? I before I like get into this serious question, I have Mitch like he's snap shooting around the corner, crawling around the floor in a balaclava. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> there right, you make quick appearance. Uh, get him on go. the show. Hey, get him on the show one time, <laughs> Mitchy Mitch. All right, here you we go. One more, and then you gotta go. Come on, come on down. <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 there he is. What up, baby? <laughs> All right, go for a stroll. We're, we are almost done. Let them know. This is the last question. It's the last question. Yep. That you're right there. <laughs> All right. Flow, so, I, guess, I guess distractions <laughs> is yeah. one thing that'll get you out of the state. Um, yeah, totally. That's what a great gosh. fucking example right there. <laughs> yeah. That's something like with X, like I've really kind of only noticed with X factor and I've noticed it from other teams, mm -hmm. but I didn't really analyze it. It's like, is distractions um I, i'd always notice it with impact you know i'd be like oh those, those guys always kind of like keep themselves mm -hmm. like they're not they're not super friendly 
They're mm-hmm. always grouped up. You'd never kind of see them wandering around. And um, with X Factor, we're, we're kind of like that. And people spoke a lot about about energy and just like saving it. And it's a it's a, a really good point. Um, like at tournaments, like you're there to win. Like you only have so much energy every day. Like don't waste it on other people. Don't waste it on things that aren't going to help you like recover or or prepare. So that's something I've just recently adopted. It's just trying to be a little bit more focused on like our game and our team and, and things like that. Um, in terms of like getting ready for games, uh, for me, I just like watching like the, the webcast or sitting in the stands, like the live paintball to me is, is big standing on the back lines, just being there, like totally. kind of in that atmosphere, seeing what um, other people are doing, like how other people are playing your position and just taking little bits from each person um and seeing what's working what isn't that that just gets me in the zone um and that's how i i feel like that's how i learned how to play paintball is just religiously watching footage um so i i do that every event watch all the footage that gets me in the zone and yeah um i don't know once you're in it i feel like until sunday night like not a lot can really take you out of it Mm -hmm. no you can't let anything take you out of it and uh, part of the question was, if you do get out of flow state, what's a like a tactic you can use to overcome that and turn up the heat and try to get that win? <laughs> turn up the heat. I'm always Just trying to turn about, down like, the heat. Yeah, no, think about <laughs> why. Think about everything that that's gotten you to where you are, like at that moment for yeah. me, like that's what gets me hyped. Like when you're losing a game, and yeah. it's like, listen, like, this is a lot like whatever it is, you know, like this is the last match. This is the last tournament. Like you've, well, you've flown across the country for weeks. You've like been away from your wife for 15 days. You know, you've been playing this sport for 13 years. Like just thinking back on that stuff, like, it's like, what are you doing? You know, like, let's go wake up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what's going through my head. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, just lights that fire. I, it doesn't yeah. matter who it is. Just you gotta go get it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. Dude, when we played you, Marcel, like I didn't even get on the, I didn't play finals, like, Mm. but like I still want to play that last point. I got pumped in the back of the head. I made as far (laughs) as I could, but it's like, you gotta, you just gotta want it, even, you know, when it doesn't look like it's possible, just give her. (laughs) That's it. Yeah, it's a fun game we get to play, you know, and people kind of lose sight of like all the opportunities out there to make something happen, do something special, like it's so cool. That shit, get out there and try to do whatever you can make the most out of those moments yeah. you have out on that field you know yeah that's right yeah man and think back to where you're at that's another one man think back yeah. to like when you first started like what yeah. if you know think like that little kid like how bad does he want to be where you are right now like yeah go go get it <laughs> that's it dude yeah. love that well hey we know that you have a, a fiesta <laughs> and snowboarding to get yeah, to yeah. and Party we to go have- to we appreciate you so much for for spending your time with us, even though you're like on vacation and in a hotel and everything. Hey, I made it work. I made it work, boys. I know yeah. I appreciate you guys having me. I've never been on a podcast. This is cool. No, um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm looking forward to playing against you guys. All the practices and tournaments coming up. Yeah, yes, you're doing sir. good things. Thank oh, you, boys. The first All one love. of 2022, brother. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. A great way Sweet. to set it off, man. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> awesome dude and then um before you go you want to shout out um any plugs any projects that you want to you know make a, a shout out to social media. sponsors yeah yeah uh, hopefully i don't forget any of them i'm pretty fresh with x factor but like all of our sponsors man alex of martinez course. and like x factor paintball they make it happen i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to do it if not for that man uh ryan like our coach mm-hmm. like amazing he comes and volunteers his time to, to help us out i mean I think he's volunteering his time. I don't know if he's getting paid, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, all the sponsors, um, shout out to, to me, new company, Astra, check that out on Instagram. He's trying to grow that. It's a really sweet clothing brand. Um, Jesse Stevens as well. Keep an eye out on, on his socials. He's working on some stuff. So yeah. he'll be releasing that pretty soon. Yeah. Awesome. What is your, <laughs> what's your Instagram handle so people can find you like on IG? On IG, I am question t underscore guest all right perfect yeah hit me up thanks guys there we go well hey thank you bro you be safe and you keep ripping it out there have some fun thanks, man. <laughs> i will i will i'm heading out right now the lads are calling all right buddy awesome, man see you guys cheers man peace, peace.
PTG fam, thank you guys so much for tuning in. First episode of 2022. We missed you guys so much. We're excited to get back in action and bring you guys all the latest and greatest shows. Man, that was a great episode. Tom is just a really cool down-to-earth dude, and he's an absolute stud on the field. I'm excited to see what he can do. Guys, if you would like, please join us in the PTG Discord. Head over to ptgpaintball.com, click the Patreon link, sign up, and get access to the Discord. Join us in there. The community is building. It's growing, and we're doing a ton of fun things. And uh, can't wait to see you there. All right, everybody. As always, we'll see you very soon. Peace.